Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Eufaula High School, Tiger Stadium, on the campus of Eufaula High School, where the number nine ranked Faith Academy Rams come in to take on the Eufaula High School Tigers in the first round of the Alabama High School uh, Sports Association playoffs. 5A playoffs get started right here in Eufaula. Tigers with a tough task. The number, the, uh, number three team out of region number one of Mobile come into Eufaula. And that's a Tough task because all three teams down there, the top three teams, it was around Robin, and uh, Faith came up short. They actually had a 14-point lead on UMS Wright two weeks ago. UMS Wright undefeated and ranked number one in Class 5A, but um, it was a one-point loss. Faith lost to UMS Wright 21-20, to and uh, so they dropped to number three in the region. Their two losses came to, as we said, to UMS Wright by one point two weeks ago. They were they were ten point losers to Gulf Shores High School. Incidentally, UMS Wright is ranked number one in Class Five A. Gulf Shores ranked number five in the final poll, and number uh, and Faith ranked, ranked number nine in the final Class Five A poll. So three of the top nine come out of Region Number One out of Mobile, and that's who you follow will take on here tonight. We're going to pause while they have uh, the. Uh, while we have the uh, the opening prayer and the playing of our national anthem, we'll be back after this on the Fall of Tiger football broadcast. When it's football time, we at First Franklin Financial are big fans of our local teams, just like you. We've been part of the community for over 75 years, and when you need money for repairs or emergencies, we'll help you play offense. We offer fixed rate loans up to $15,000 with easy payment plans and fast approvals. Visit 1FFC.com to find the location near you. Legal, all loan terms and applicable APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria for the loan size requested and may require collateral. Georgia Residential Mortgage License Number 5656. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries and home and auto insurance from State Farm. Combine and save. Call State Farm agent Sam Wise in Eufaula today. Attention contractors, is your metal roofing provider slowing you down? Apex Metal Express fills orders within a week. 40-year finish warranty, 17 different colors, and multiple truss styles. Work more and wait less. With the world changing all around us, everyone needs to be covered by insurance. So give Eric Glover with the Glover Agency a call and talk with Eric about auto, home, life, or last week's football game. Whatever your insurance needs, let Eric talk to you about being covered. The Glover Agency is located at 145 East Broad Street, Eufaula, Alabama. Call 334-687-0358. Benny Whitehead Incorporated has called Eufaula home since 1965. Today, the family-owned business owns and operates 119 tractors and trailers and employs over 150 people. Benny Whitehead is nationally known as a leader in safety and keeping the air clean and fuel consumption low. Benny Whitehead Incorporated loves Eufaula and would like to wish Lakeside and Eufaula safe and successful season. The family at Impressive Collision Center has been in business since 1940. That's impressive. Your transportation is one of the largest investments you have, so keep it looking new at Impressive. From a major crash to a small dent, Impressive can help. Now Impressive. They work closely with all insurance companies and give you a great price on your minor mishaps. Wow, Impressive. And don't forget to check out all the accessories from install winches, brush guards, and bed covers. Impressive. Give them a call. Impressive Collision Center, 317 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-4400. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. Welcome back to the Brown Heat and Air broadcast booth on the campus of Eufaula High School here at Tiger Stadium, where the Tigers and the Rams are getting uh, ready to take on one another in a first-round matchup. Uh, 
as we talked about before uh, before the break, Doug, um, tough task for the Tigers. You never know how you're going to match up when you uh, match up with a region from another part of the state. There are no common opponents. Um, you really just don't know. I mean, typically year in and year out, a region number one is tough competition, particularly the private schools down there. UMS Wright, Coach Terry Curtis just don't make a whole lot of mistakes. And um, this team here seems to be very, very similar. Um, they throw the ball very well. Uh, they throw the ball for about 170 yards a game. They run the ball for about 120 yards a game. It's a fairly balanced attack. <clears throat> Seven turnovers on the season for them, four interceptions, three fumbles, uh, while they force 19 from the other team. So they're plus 12 on turnover ratio, and that's pretty good. You win a lot of games when you're uh, – when you're when you turn the ball, when you turn the other team over about three to one. Yeah, and this team had uh, UMS Wright and Coach Curtis on the ropes uh, a week or two ago. Lost by one point. Uh, I think they had a 14 point lead in that game. Uh, wound up losing 21 to 20. You got the number one, the number three, and whatever they are now. Three top 10 teams all year long coming out of that same region. And, you know, we kind of. We kind of knew they were going to be super tough coming in here, and it was going to be a tall task for the Tigers. Even though you're playing them at home, which you're, you're glad to do, uh, finishing second instead of first made a big difference in our region. And, uh, you know, we got a tough faith team coming in here. But, you know, when you think about it, it it's sports writers, and there's not a lot. When you got a nine team region down there, there's not a lot of cross reference games that you can compare with. So you're just going on sports writers and, and what you see from them as saying that they're the, the top teams in the in the state. But when you come out here and you watch these guys warm up, they are fundamentally sound. They, they're spot on. We watched the quarterback throw about 20 passes down the field, 20, 25 yards, and the uh, receiver could have put his hands in the same spot every time a five-gallon bucket, and they would have went in it. So. Uh, Right. Uh, the line, just everybody, the, the, their first step is where it's supposed to be. The first steps on routes, everything they're doing is like it's supposed to be, and that's uh, awful tough to beat. I mean, even though they've got about 14 players that seem to carry the whole weight and play the whole time, there's uh, very good, well-coached 14 players. Yeah, and um, the stats I have are not through all 10 games, apparently. Apparently, it's, a, it's nine games worth of stats, and apparently the, the quarterback you're alluded to missed a game because it's for eight games for him, but uh, looks a lot like A.J. McCarron um, in uniform. He's 6'4", 165, but he is completing right at 73% of his passes on the season. He is um, 99 of 136 for 1,600 yards, um, 15 touchdowns, and four interceptions. That's a pretty high quarterback rating for him. And um, he is averaging about two touchdown passes per game. And um, so they're very efficient through the air. Has some very good-looking receivers uh, to catch those balls. Uh, Coach uh, Jernigan last night talked about number one for them. Uh, he's a very good athlete. He also plays cornerback for them. His name is Don, uh, Dorian Smith. He's a 5'9", 165-pound senior. Uh, he is their leading receiver on the on the year. Um, then um, – he has 565 yards of uh, offense, four touchdowns. The second leading receiver is also the other quarterback, cornerback, Tyrell Dotson, a 5'11", 157-pound junior uh, wide receiver and defensive back. He has uh, 308 yards uh, receiving with three touchdowns. And um, leading the way in the backfield, as we talked about, is a uh, big running back. Um, his name is Christian Burnett. He is a five. Oh no, I'm sorry, a six foot, two hundred and four pound senior running back, and um, he is uh, had a good year. He averages uh, right at eighty yards rushing per game. He has seven hundred thirteen yards uh, through through nine games, as we said. So um, eleven touchdowns on the on the ground for him. So that's the three leaders. Now they've also got a tall receiver. Um, Tiny and Goodwill, 6'2", 189, and uh, he plays safety as well for them. But he has uh, 545 yards. He's actually the second leading receiver for them, not listed that way on the stats, but six touchdowns and uh, right at 68 yards per game. So a three-headed monster on the on the receiving core for them to go along with the, the, the big running back in the backfield and a very efficient quarterback. So um, 
they don't make a lot of mistakes, which is the which is the big thing, Doug. Uh, very efficient offense. It would be so big if the Tigers could force a turnover or two from them tonight. Yeah, and they don't, that's something they don't do very much of either. While you get uh, the captains out, I want to touch base a little bit. It's a big week for the Tigers. A good thing we had last week off as a – I don't want to say the majority of the team, but we had a large, large portion as we had a couple last two weeks ago when we played on Friday night that was out because of the flu. Kind of went through us last week, and they didn't get much practice, and a lot of them was out with the flu. A couple of packages tonight to watch out for. We've held on to and not said anything to this point, but they're going to have some packages where Yonze Pierre comes in and plays in the backfield and plays quarterback for the Tigers, and they can do several things out of that uh, formation if they can do it. Little thing that worries me a little bit. They're talking about wearing down faith that after ten games and at this point in the year, and then playing in Mobile. I don't think there's a. I know if even as fourteen, they're in shape. There's not going to be a lot of wearing them down. So uh, we're going to have to be ready to go right from the get go. We need something positive to happen uh, quick and something to happen good. And Keith, you know the man, the man with the plan has been keeping this field all year. This is the best I've seen Tiger Stadium or Senior Stadium or any of them. At this point in the season, in in close to 50 years or or at least 45 years of football. Yeah, um, you know, it is November 4th today. We are in no- November. Gun season comes in two weeks from tomorrow, deer season, and we've got a green field out here, Doug. I mean, Andrew Dunson and Dunson's Lawn Service have done an outstanding job maintaining this field this year. Um, I, walk, I had an opportunity to walk down on the surface a couple of times after games, and um, – it's as good up close as it looks from up here. Yeah, I mean, it it's awful uh, good from up here. It's uh, it's outstanding playing surface. Captains for Eufaula. We'll we'll see who won the toss and who's going to get the ball. But uh, the Eufaula captains, Eufaula won the toss. They want the they want the ball. So Eufaula, that's that's a message right there that we want it uh, to go against this strong defense that's giving up less than seven points a game. But uh, Nick Floyd, uh, senior safety for the Tigers. John Zay Pierre, senior. Edge rusher for the Tigers, Copeland Cotton, senior quarterback. They go along with Patrick Screws, a senior tackle uh, for the Tigers. For Faith Academy, uh, number six, Lucas Young. He's a senior uh, wide receiver. Uh, he was one of their captains along with the big running back. We talked about Christian Burnett, um, a six foot, 205 pound senior running back. Uh, Damar, Damari Moore, a six one, 300 pound defensive tackle, offensive tackle, senior. And uh, Zach Perrin, uh, this is a center for them, six foot, one hundred eighty-eight pounds. So that's a, a, a uh, eight seniors were the captains tonight, uh, four for either team. And uh, interesting, Doug. Let's talk about that for a moment. As uh, you follow one the toss, and you know, typically you defer. We just, we elect to take the ball tonight. We're trying to make a statement. Need to get on the board and uh, not play from behind tonight. We uh, don't need to wait four and a half quarters before we turn it on. We got to. From this point on, you gotta you gotta play your best every minute of, of the game and, and and do your best. A little bit of good news if you watched the coaches show yesterday. Nick Chubb had his uh, doctor's appointment this morning. You know he's been out several weeks with a broke uh, hand, wrist, whatever it was. Had a cast. He is dressed tonight. He does have a cast still. It's a padded cast. I don't know that's how it's going to affect him carrying the ball. But he was out in warm ups and was very active in warm ups. So we look to see him as part of the lineup tonight. Well, that's great. Good news because uh, two weeks ago over in early Canada, the Tigers were very short-handed. We we're missing a starting offensive lineman and the top two running backs, but the, the Tigers uh, managed to come out of that and win an exciting game, scoring on the final play of the game. We really didn't talk about that in pregame tonight, but we did last night on the coaches' show. But uh, 28 unanswered points for you fall last Friday night in the final stanza. And right here before we kick off, we wanted to uh, shout out. We're man short tonight. Charles Urban's not with us tonight. We want to wish a special happy birthday to his wife, Miss Cindy, who uh, he's taking care of Miss Cindy tonight on her birthday, so he's in excused absence. Yeah. So the ball's on the tee. Uh, number 44, Kaiden Vinson. Three-step a freshman. He is a freshman kicker for them. A pair of freshman kickers. You don't see that very often. It's a pooch kick. Going to come down to the 20. 20- Two-yard line, 23. It's Nick Floyd. Makes the first man miss. He's going to cross the 40-yard line, still on his feet out to the 44. Just kind of a, a uh, jitterbug return that time as he just kind of picked his way through the uh, return team for Faith and a good starting field position for you follow up around the 44-yard line. 
You know, they've got, we talked about a couple of guys that are supposed to be, you know, big, healthy young men. But as I look out across there, uh, our line doesn't, uh, maybe they watch the Charles Henderson film and they're going for quickness, but we outsize them across the front. Pistol formation, two receivers to either side. Tiger's going to throw on first down. Throws it complete. It is Browning Anderson into Ram territory inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Quick 12 yards to um, for the Tigers on first down. One play, 12 yards, first down Tigers in Faith territory. Good throw and catch by Copeland right off the bat. Pew and a wing to the left, one receiver to that side. They're going to hand the ball off to Harris this time. Harris in the secondary. He breaks inside the 35. He's going to pick up 10 more yards, count that 11 more yards to the 13-yard line. So 12 yards on the first play on a pass, 11 there, back-to-back first downs. The Tigers are are threatening. They quickly jump into a five-man front, get out of that 4-4 they were playing on defense. Quick throw, complete to Anderson. Anderson spinning inside the 30. He'll go down about the 27-yard line. That's a quick gain of six on first down. So second down four after the six-yard gain on first down. The Tigers first, uh, second six, or second five, four, I'm sorry, from the 27-yard line. Harris, single back behind the quarterback, Cotton. Cotton takes. He looks to throw. He throws it complete. Anderson going to have a first down inside the 20. He's still on his feet. He's going to finally be gang tackled about the 14-yard line, but that's 13 more yards. There's a flag on the field about the 18-yard line. Let's check that penalty. Check the penalty. They're holding the, holding the chains. We'll see what we've got here. We were told before this contest, you know, you get some a crew that you've not had, neither team has had before. We're actually got the Wiregrass, the Dothan officials tonight here for this game. Has not, uh, they're going back to the spot. That's going to be a hold against you, follow. Well, it, it, the line of scrimmage was the 27, so this happened downfield. So it's going to be second down. Second down and about the same, about second and five now. So the Tigers lost a, a do-over. lost a yard on that penalty. Yeah, basically a do-over. Second and five um, after the hold. But that was a, uh, a good play for Tigers. Hate to see it taken away. So second down from the 28. Quick throw once again. It's going to be tipped up in the air. Incomplete intended that time for Tony Coleman. It brings up the first third down of the contest so far with 1034 to go here in the first quarter quarter of the first incompletion we and, had uh, two receivers right on top of each other that time and keith they are creeping up looking for that pickoff there as they dropped back into that four four and a passing situation there now they're they, gonna go with a five-man front they have 12 interceptions on the season does faith cotton takes a snap he's gonna fake he throws it it's tipped yeah. to the line of scrimmage it would have been a first down as pew was down there tigers in no man's land they'll probably go for it here on fourth down it would have been, if Pew caught the ball, it would have been a first down there, Doug, as it was just a kind of a tight end. He was wide open, pass. but we've seen Pew drop a couple of those this year, but he was uh, definitely wide open. Could have been a flag, too, as the safety come up and popped him there several steps after the ball went by, but no flag. Fourth and call it five for the Tigers. Back-to-back incompletions after the Tigers have time really – Time out on the field. We'll step aside. Be back in the Brown He and Air broadcast booth after this commercial break. Somebody cannot come to us, we go to them. It's something that we do on a regular basis, something we don't mind doing, and we work on a contingency basis. No one has to uh, pay us any money up front. They do not have to pay us unless we collect for them, unless we are successful in uh, resolving their case through a settlement or through trial. They don't have to pay us any money unless we get favorable results for them. If you're hurt in a car wreck, call Penn and Seaborn. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. No representation is made that the quality of the legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. Hey, Tiger fans. This is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty, and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! 
28-yard line of faith. The Tigers in opening possession of the night. They moved the ball down inside the 20 before a holding penalty. Backed them up. Cotton takes the snap, looking to throw. He's going to throw it into the end zone. Has a man there just going to overthrow everyone, intended for Anderson. And uh, Faith has held as uh, Ufala took the opening kickoff. They won the toss. They, they elected to take the ball. They drove it quickly downfield. 12-yard uh, play, 11-yard play, 6-yard play. And it would have been a 13-yard play, but a holding penalty backed them up. And uh, the Tigers go with three straight incompletions. And, Doug, we saw that last uh, two weeks ago. There were four separate occasions in that ball game at, at Blakely where the Tigers had three straight incompletions. That happened four times in a row, and it's already happened here tonight. So that, that drive stalls at the 28-yard line of of Faith, and they're out quickly. They're in shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. They'll take the snap, looking to throw. Quarterback's going to fire it. He has a man there. He catches it. Number seven, he's down the sidelines. Nick Floyd giving chase, going to drive him out at the 15-yard line. But uh, big, big play already for Faith. They just brought a man dragging across the field. He caught the ball. Tigers failed to make the tackle. And um, big, big play. And they're going to mark him out at the, at the 17-yard line. But that is a 55-yard pass play on the first play of the game for Faith. How many yards? 55. It happens that's 10 10 on the clock. Tiger defense digs in. They've given up big plays in, in every game this year so far. And a big play on the very first play for Faith. That time, the, the big running back, Christian Burnett, at uh, right tackle, he picks up one. One yard. They have a good field goal kicker. They are uh, probably in field goal range. That would be big for the Ufala Tigers if they could hold them to a field goal attempt. It'll be second and nine here from the 16-yard line after the one-yard gain. That was a very good pass that time from Jarrett Daughtry, the junior quarterback, to uh, Goodwin. Sack on the play. It's going to be Yonze Pierre all the way back to the 20. They're going to say the 25 yard lines where they, they're going to put him down. He went down about the 28 yard line. They mark it at the 25. That's going to be a loss of nine on the play. So big play, big sack by Yonze Pierre that probably puts him out of field goal range uh, at this point. But it's going to be third down and a long, third down and 18 yards to go. While we have a second, we made the comment. We are not allowed to show the game on video per Alabama High School Athletic Association. Yeah, we tried to tell everyone that's it's stone in the end zone. Good play by Nick Floyd. He could have intercepted that ball. He just let it go sell over his head. Well, I say that, but now it's fourth down. Yeah, I, don't know why <laughs> I don't know why. It's not fourth down. It was third down, third and 18. He really kind of just watched. He was watching the receiver who never really made a play on the ball as the ball was thrown about uh, five yards deep in the end zone. He let it sail on over. I really think Floyd probably could intercept that pass if yeah. he had made a play on the ball. But uh, it's fourth down now, fourth and 18. So a 55-yard play by Faith on the, on their first play of the game. And their drive is stalled so far at the 25. Empty backfield. Quarterback Daughtry is going to throw it. And, and they're going to throw it. Whistle. It was Carter, caught in the end zone, but early. whistles were blowing. So apparently they moved. As the yeah, there's a flag down. down. So there's number three for them, the receiver, uh, Edwin King. So it's a uh, five yard penalty against Faith. It'll be, uh, it'll be. Fourth down and 23 from the 30-yard line. The first down would come all the way down at the Tiger 7-yard line. <laughs> Movement again. It's going to cost Faith five more yards. 
Doug, I, I like what I'm seeing here lately. As long as the Tigers can 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 make a play for one play, you know they're going to throw it in the end zone. So it's going to be uh, – Yeah, I was hoping that uh, not catching that pass where it looked like he could catch it comes back to haunt us. But fourth and a long ways. you got to feel like they're going to go back to that drag route across the middle here to try to pick up. They can get a first down down around the seven-yard line. So 8.36 to go in the first quarter. Scoreless game here from Tiger Stadium. Empty backfield. Daltrey is there. Yonce Pierre lines up on the We've left. He is coming. Start too. he got to run his start. He's going to sack him. He is down at the 43-yard line. Yonce shot past the offensive tackle. And, and, Doug, if they try to block him with one man all night, he's going to have a He's going to wear him out, yeah. That was about a, what, 10-yard loss or so there? That was a 9-yard uh, a loss. Another 9-yard loss. And, actually, he tried to sidestep Yonze, and the guy that was chasing him, they're trying to block him, actually ran into the quarterback. Yonze had him around the ankles and finished him off, so his own tackle knocked him down there. Tigers take over at the 44-yard line, first and 10. Cotton takes. He hands to Harris. Harris makes it across the line of scrimmage, picks up two yards before he is driven back. Keith, another real uh, surprise here. I, I know it's early, and I guess they're getting in, introduced to Mr. Williams, but Headland's up on USM right, UMS right, 7 to nothing early. How about that? You follow starts to their 44-yard line for the second time already here in the first quarter, so Tigers have enjoyed good starting field position. So oh, there it is. And You've it's seen a pick it coming. six. They sat on the outside route. We talked about the fact that uh, Faith has intercepted uh, 12 passes all season. Now make that 13 as uh, that pass was intended out into the right flat. And the safety wide receiver, uh, he has the only two receptions for them. Uh, he has an interception and a reception. That's Goodwill, Goodwill, 6'2", 189-pound junior. And uh, he takes it back about – about 50 yards on that interception return. Yeah, gee, well, you could see him creeping up there, uh, the, the possession before you knew it was coming. Now the biggest thing, somebody's got to get Copeland Cotton's head and not let that affect him. He's got to shake that off and come back out and start over. We jumped off. That's no big deal. What is that, a three-foot penalty? Yeah. 7.49 to go here in the first quarter. So they do so well on the turnover ratio, and that just adds to it. We, right talked, about, we talked about that in They're the They're going to go for two now after the uh, offsides. Well, they play the percentages, and um, they bring, we bring in uh, Parker Sim Simmons, uh, Patrick Screw, some of the linemen to beef it up up front a little bit there. They're going to go with, it looks like, is that the, they're going to go with a Wildcat quarterback or is the quarterback still in there? Uh, they're really not showing their hand, I believe, unless he has squatted down. It's going to be Wildcat. Well, that, the the play clocks are not working. We had trouble with them right before the start. They're going to take a time out and talk about it. Well, that's good for you follow because you follow has an opportunity to discuss it as well. So with that timeout, we'll take a timeout and be back after this commercial break. Hey, Tiger fans, Daniel Pulley here, your local Chick-fil-A Ufala owner-operator. We are so excited to be the official sponsor of the weekly Ufala Tiger Coaches Show for the 2022 football season. Join us for the live show at Chick-fil-A Ufala every Thursday starting at 6 p.m. Our incredible team is ready to serve you. And don't forget, eat more chicken. Hey, we're back. Uh... His faith is about ready to take do a two point conversion as both both uh, teams are heading back out. Um, so anyway, we'll we'll after this play we will uh, we'll talk about what's going on here. They're in a very unusual formation. They're going to shift now and put Somebody a get man over. wide out. Nick Floyd will go outside with the receiver. Goodwill. They're going to run a quarterback sneak, and he is going to get. It looks like into the end zone for the two-point conversion. We'll wait and see. They're very delayed making this call. And um, everybody is saying for Faith is good. But uh, just a quarterback sneak from the one-and-a-half-yard line. That is the longest delay. They have not delayed. said anything yet. It either it is or it ain't, folks. Come on. Yeah, they still just, have not said it. Not if you didn't on. see it up to this point, and they're going to give it to him apparently, how can you stand there and discuss it that long? Obviously, somebody didn't see it. 
Good. Well, so the offsides on Ufala probably cost them a point there. So, you know, we talked about mistakes. You know, I had a lot of people ask me uh, today about Ufala's chances this game. I said, hey, you know, Ufala really needs to play a clean game, Doug, and that's already out the window here, less yeah. than halfway through the uh, first quarter. Well, they got to shake it off because if that gets, you know, sometimes Cotton will get down on itself a little bit and you can't do it here or you'll find yourself down 20 points real quick. Now for the elephant in the room. We have talked about this till we're blue in the face, folks, and I'm probably going to make some folks mad. No, we cannot show you live audio. I mean, live video. Live video in the playoffs. We have to pay for the audio that comes out of our pocket. So you're fortunate to have that. If folks, I'm going to start blocking folks if they keep asking, but we cannot show live video because it's owned by NFHS and WOTM, I think it is. Well, and, and even we talked to another school that paid for the rights for video, and they have to show it on a 12-hour delay. So if you want to watch live video, the only option, and you follow, returns a kick to the 34-yard line. Once again, that's Nick Floyd. But uh, the only option for live video is going to be the NFHS network. And it's about uh... – it's a, even the delayed is about uh, three times as much as what we have to pay, which is not cheap. Uh, NFHS Network, we don't have anything to do with during the playoffs. We gave them our voiceover and, and showed the commercials and stuff during the season because we were allowed to help and do that. But when it comes to playoff, they do their own thing, and we're not allowed to be a part of it. So, Unfortunately, that's the situation. We tried to tell you one two weeks ago at, uh, at, at Early County. We, we said it many, many times, and then in the coaches' show, Two weeks ago and last night, we 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 stressed the fact that there would be no video except for NFHS tonight. First down play, you follow picks up two yards. That's a run by Harris. Two yard gain. It'll be second down and eight. I even made a post this morning. I know you probably have as well on the broadcast page about that. They're actually in a six man front now. They're trying to take the run away from you, follow. Down the field is Anderson going. Oh, that's yeah. a cheap shot. Anderson, they're going to throw the flag. Yes. And he is down. Anderson is down. He's not getting up. Safety come I'm across and hit him. Right under the chin. He never went for the ball. And right. that was uh, – and he's wondering what he did. Uh, you know, He didn't go for the ball. And I'm going to tell you, Anderson is tough as a woodpecker beak. But uh, – He's, he's he's still down. That was right up under the chin. He was exposed. He had he had got behind the receiver, and I'm gonna tell you what: 15 yards from the line of scrimmage is only half of what he would have had if he could have gathered that in. But that was uh, I don't think he meant it to be a cheap shot. But uh, you can't do that at any level of football anymore. We hear somebody yelling from across the field about the complaining about that penalty, but I mean Anderson's still down. It was a they certainly didn't have a good look at it like we did. It happened down here pretty close to us. It had a great angle, and it was definitely a – that would have been a penalty at every level that I'm aware of. It would have been a yeah. penalty at, in the college level in the NFL, and, and it might have even been targeting. They, that yeah. player may yeah, have been – He'd probably been gone, yeah. He probably would have been ejected. It'll be a first down, take the ball out to midfield for the Tigers. And, folks, back to the other while we have a second. Look, there's there's nothing we would like better. It's been a blessing this year to be able to show you the games, and you see some of the things that we've – We've ran into, and you see some of the calls from official. And we, we were after number eight for them. He just come over to the sideline and checked on uh, Anderson and looked like was apologizing to our coaches. His class act thing there from, from the young man from, from Faith. But uh, Anderson is on our sideline, still down there talking to him. Um, but it's been great for us to be able to show the games. You've seen some of the things that – we can only describe, and it's hard to believe sometimes when you, when you see it. But uh, if there's any way we could do it, we would gladly do it. We're just not allowed to do it. That's right. Let's take a quick commercial timeout as they tend to uh, Anderson, and we'll be back after this commercial break. Hey, Tiger fans. Daniel Pulley here, your local Chick-fil-A Ufala owner-operator. We are so excited to be the official sponsor of the weekly You Follow Tiger Coaches Show for the 2022 football season. Join us for the live show at Chick-fil-A You Follow every Thursday starting at 6 p.m. Our incredible team is ready to serve you. And don't forget, eat more chicken. Hey, Tiger fans. This is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty, and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! 
Back at Tiger Stadium where uh, Anderson is up. He's going to the sideline under his own power, and that's a good sign. We'll keep an eye out for that. He's been a big part of the, the game here in the first half of the first quarter for the Tigers. Tron Mitchell, Tony Coleman split wide to the right. Uh, on the left side is going to be Thomas Hill. He is in for Anderson. Harris, the running back behind Cotton. First and 10 from midfield. Hand off to Harris. He's going to pull, uh, go forward for three yards down to the 47-yard line of Faith. Second down, seven. Just under seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. Faith leads eight to nothing if you tuned in late. Both teams uh, drove the ball down the field on their first possession. Both both teams turned it over on downs, but uh, you follow throwing a, a pick six on their last possession returned about 50 yards back for the Faith touchdown. Second down, seven. Pistol formation. Harris will get the ball. A little bit of running room this time. He lowers his head. He takes it forward about a yard short of his first down. He gets to the 41-yard line. He needs the 40 for the first down. Give him seven yards on that play. That was very unusual, Doug. He got picked up and thrown down by one of the linebackers from Faith. It looked like he was going to pick up his first down, but uh, he came up about a yard short. Third and one. Five-man front. Two linebackers walked up kind of close for Faith. Be it time to take a shot through the air. Single coverage on the outside. Receivers. Oh, we got them. And they jumped offside, so it will be a free five. And Anderson checks back into the game now. And as soon as he does, the corner that was guarding him, it wasn't the young man that hit him, come up and shook his hand and looked like said, are you okay? So class act there by the Rams uh, for Anderson. It picks up a first down for the Tigers at the 35-yard line. First and 10. Cotton will take the snap, looking to throw this time. He's looking towards Anderson, but he pulls it down. He's going to be sacked. He went right around the double team. On that, our, was, that was the running back, Christian. Sophomore side of the line of scrimmage. Christian Burnett. That's the uh, big loss. Yeah, big running back for them. Six foot, 204 pounds, and uh, we lost seven yards on that, on that sack. Yeah, we had uh, the whole right side, the, the two sophomores that are on that side uh, was trying to block him, and he just went to the outside and outquicked him and was able to get He's to. He's lined uh, up against Cotton. Patrick this time. Now, they're 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 blitzing. They're in a four-man front. They're tapping on each other and making adjustments. Tiger's going to throw a screen this time. and They read it. And they read it. He went right through He Patrick went right and through. Parker. Yeah, that, that's uh, – if they could have gotten a block on that linebacker, it might have been uh, a decent – gain for the Tigers, but as it is, it's no gain on that completed pass. It'll be third down and long. Third down, 17 yards to go. And, Doug, this is what we saw from the Tiger defense drove them back after they had a big play. This may be a defensive struggle. It's just a shame we gave them points uh, that they scored on defense. Cotton going to throw the screen once again. It's going to be a wide receiver screen to Coleman. Coleman breaks a tackle. He He's down the sidelines. He's going to be short of his first down, but he did pick up about 17, 16, no, I'm sorry. He picked up about 10 yards on that play. Still, though, it might be close enough we can go for it. I don't know if drawing them all sides is going to get it. but Fourth down and five. They got to the 31-yard line. He needed the thir- the 26, so he picked up 12, 12 on that reception. They just drug him across. It was kind of a delayed drag route. It looked like a screen, but he really didn't have the blockers in front of him. Um, it was just a, a delayed. He he, he drove back across and, and uh, good job of running. Tried to draw him. Fourth and five, 420. Clock is stopped. Tigers changing something. Coleman comes in and uh, Cotton is changing the play. Hand went up in the back. It's under five or ten seconds when he does. Cotton that. reverse fields. They're going to be a flag. We blocked the man while he was down, and that's not a holding. That is, it's, it's going to be de- declined. Parker Simmons, actually it wasn't Parker, I'm sorry, it was the center. The guy that was chasing Copeland, he slid down. down, and as he slid down, he started to get back up. The, and, in, and our lineman, the center, shoved him da- back down, and he's calling a holding against him. Well, he, that called was, blocking, that was he called a block in the back. He did holding with his hand right there on that signal, Yeah, but uh, which is totally, totally legal. 
But nevertheless, it's going to be declined, and they'll have first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Yeah. Appreciate the update from uh, Carl Phillips. It's uh, Hedlund and UMS rights tied at seven now in that ball game. Well, you know, good kudos to Hedlund. Going oh, yeah. down there and taking the lead in that game. Well, you, sometimes you just have to – what you see on film is uh, it's hard to judge at speed, and that's one thing Williams and that Headland group's got. And uh, it, But that's a tall task. UMS will, will adjust just as good as anybody. So first and ten for the Rams. Snap, looks. Going to throw a screen. He's complete on the outside to their leading receiver. But the Tigers do a good job stringing it out for only a one-yard gain. That was complete to Dorian Smith. He is a speedster on the outside, but only a one-yard gain for them uh, out to the 32-yard line. It'll be second and nine. With the exception of one big play on offense, their first play, yards, yep. um, they haven't done much. 3.37 to go. As you can tell, I, you know, we're back in radio mode, but uh, with a – Camera, we, we thought bringing the camera and putting it on the scoreboard would be helpful to our viewing audience. Rolling out, they're going to throw a screen back well, again. And it's complete. They set it up well, and he, Tigers are trying to get him mm -hmm. down, and he's going to break tackles, and looks like he's going to get forward for enough for a first down. It looks like a gain of nine on that play. That we was the big it. guy. Was it 23? No, that was a different one there. Oh. That was uh, – sorry, but I missed – it's number five. Number five on that. That is a uh, Jackson yards. Williams, and we don't have it. We don't have a size for him. On, They're on actually the saying third and short. Okay, so eight yard gain. We'll say. Well, I don't gave him nine. We'll see here. Hey, maybe they'll throw an incomplete pass, and they're going to yeah. do the quarterback sneak, and he's going to pick yeah. it up. They were at the forty-one. He gets to the uh, across the forty-three. So a two-yard, almost a three. We'll go, call it three-yard gain on that. Uh, Running play, and that is a first. For, that is a first down. It's only the second of the night for Faith. They lead eight to nothing. If you tune in late, I guess you can see it on the scoreboard. They uh, intercepted a pass and ran it back about fifty yards. It was an out route that they read. They cut it underneath it, and it was a uh, clear sailing. No one even was close to. Uh, they're they're throwing a lot of these wide receiver screens, and my goodness, down the sidelines, he finally runs out of real estate. Fortunately, that is number seven again. Goodwill. Um, but they have, that is the third time on this possession they've run that same play, Doug. So that, that play picks up 12 yards and a uh, Ram first down. Into Tiger territory now, just uh, screens and little quick outs. They found the going hard up against uh, – what they're doing is slowing down the rush from Yonze. They're going to hand it off this time, and he's going to that, – that back has got some speed. Doug, uh, around the end goes Christian Burnett, and my goodness. Not only does he weigh 204 pounds, but he, he's got a lot of speed. We saw the speed when he made the sack earlier, but uh, he looked like he was shot out of the cannon that time as he took the buck sweep around the right end, and it was uh, another first down at the 26-yard line. Well, our that, defense, that was an 18-yard game. Our defense has had trouble all year with the outside and the – the Rams are exploiting it here. Need to bow their backs here and keep them out of the end zone. Already down by eight. Going to hand it off. It is number five. He is going to hit in the backfield. He's going to go down for a loss of a yard on the play. I'm going to tell you what. Give it to them on good play calling to try to keep the Tiger rush, as you said, um, off balance. Yeah, they thought they could have some time to start with, and Yonze was wearing them out. Everything they're doing on this drive is quick, quick, quick. Quarterback is not holding on to the ball. Second 11 from the 27-yard line. Quarterback takes, looking to throw. He's going to throw it this time across the middle, and he's going to be hit immediately right there after a two-yard gain to the 25-yard line. That was a completion, but only a two-yard gain. I'll tell you what, that, that quarterback's impressed. He's throwing it in the middle of the field, but, I mean, he's throwing darts out there. Yeah, I mean, he's got a very good arm. Very accurate. Throws a very pretty pass, very tight spiral. Third and nine from the 25-yard line of Yafala. 35 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Faith leading eight to nothing. Big possession here uh, for the Tiger defense. Snap, looking to throw, going to throw the fade route. There's receiver there, 
It's going to be incomplete. Good coverage by Tony Coleman. As uh, it was uh, it was number seven, their, their leading receiver tonight anyway, Goodwill, against Tony Coleman. And Coleman did a great job that time. He did. He was trying to do a little back shoulder pass there. And they're going to go for it on fourth down here in no man's land. But uh, you kind of like the idea of giving him a shot there. I've been impressed with this quarterback. Just a junior, as you called out earlier. It's, uh, hey, we need to find out if his mom and dad like fishing and hunting. And <laughs> tell him how good Barber County could be for that. But uh, he's a very impressive-looking quarterback. So fourth and nine, 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. Eight to nothing, Faith leads. They're going to go and delay count. That's snap, looking to throw. Good rush. They throw the same route again. And um, – Coleman, once again, does a good job covering the receiver, and uh, it'll be a turnover on downs for the second time tonight. 25-yard line is about as far deep of penetration. Actually, they got down, I guess, to the 12 earlier after that uh, 17, after that after that big 55-yard pass play. But Tiger defense has done their job. They've bent, but they haven't broken. And um, the Tiger offense is back out trying to put some points on the board. 13 seconds to go here in the um, first quarter. Tigers with three receivers, two right, one to the left, one back, Harris. He's gone all the way at running back so far. He's behind Cotton, the senior quarterback. It'll be Harris. He's going to be hit immediately. He barely makes it, maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to spot him forward progress to the line of scrimmage, but that is all. He ran right into the teeth of a five- or six-man front. That'll be the end of the first quarter. From the Brown Heating and uh, Air Condition Broadcast booth, we'll be back after this commercial timeout with your second quarter. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty, and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! When it's football time, we at First Franklin Financial are big fans of our local teams, just like you. We've been part of the community for over 75 years, and when you need money for repairs or emergencies, we'll help you play offense. We offer fixed rate loans up to $15,000 with easy payment plans and fast approvals. Visit 1FFC.com to find the location near you. Legal, all loan terms and applicable APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria for the loan size requested and may require collateral. Georgia Residential Mortgage License number 5656. at Tiger Stadium in the Brown Egan Air broadcast booth with Tigers. You follow have a second down and 10 from their 25-yard line. Both offenses have, have driven the ball. Uh, Faith has got two offensive drives into Tiger territory that came up short, turnover on downs. You follow has one first Tiger possession. They drove down, would have been first and 10 at the 13-yard line of Faith, but they called holding, back the Tigers up. They were unable to overcome that penalty. And uh, they ultimately turned it over on downs and a pick six um, from Faith. And a two-point conversion is the difference in the game as Faith leads eight to nothing right now. Second down, 10. Two receivers to the right. One to the left. There's a snap. Rolling to the right is Cotton. He's looking. He's got Mitchell. First time tonight he's been targeted. It's a completion up across the 30 to the 33-yard line. That'll be about... Three yards short of his first down. That's a seven-yard gain on the completion. It'll bring up third down and three conversion situation. The Tigers need to get just shy, about halfway between the 35 and 36-yard line as the ball is just short of the 33-yard line. So almost three yards to go. Going to hand it off to Harris. He breaks free. Right He's going to have, right have, a, have a first down in a mm. shoestring tackle. At the 49-yard line prevents more yardage, but that's a 16-yard gain from Harris, and the Tigers pick up a first down. Well, Keith, we talked about it in the show yesterday. It's supposed to – Jarrell was so reluctant to have our band playing and stuff when they were on offense. Theirs is doing it, so we ought to fire it up when they're on offense. Hand off to Harris again. He hits the second level once again, and he takes it inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. That's seven more yards real quickly for Harris. The Tigers had – some pretty good success running the ball tonight. Harris has eight carries for 47 yards up to this point. There's a handoff Ooh. once again. Harris breaks to the outside. He's in the secondary at the 30. He's going to go to the 28-yard line. So 
Number eight's going to have nightmares about Harris coming downfield as he's just dove at his ankles and clipped his legs out from under him the last couple of times. That's 17 yards on that play and another first down. Nine carries, 64 yards for Harris to, to this point. They're swapping some big men up front. If we snap the ball, we catch him with too many men, and we're going to get a motion because we leaned forward trying to catch him with too many men on the field. Copeland Cotton was begging for the snap, and he couldn't get it. So it's going to be a motion against the Tigers. My goodness. That's one of those situations where we're trying to take advantage of them having 12 on the field, and it cost us five yards. Yeah, he was begging, clapping, hollering. And our back leaned forward just a little bit, and it cost us five. So first and 15, Tigers have been clipping it down the field on this possession. Let's see if they can keep it going after the five-yard penalty. From the 32-yard line, going to hand it off again. This time it's Chubb Nelson. Chubb's going to take it back around the line of scrimmage. He picks up about four and a half yards, even four on that play. It'll be second and 11 from around the 28-yard line. Just hope this drive keeps going as it uh, penalties has been killing us, stopping drives. Let's hope it doesn't stop this one. Second and 11. Three receivers to the wide side, field left. They got a lot of folks in the box. Going to play action. They're going to throw it. It's Pew. He catches it. He tries to keep his balance. He's going to go down just shy of the 20-yard line. That play picks up eight yards, makes the third down more manageable. It'll be third down, certainly in four down territory of the Tigers. It's going to be third down in about four. Third and four as they bring Yonze Pierre into the game. You know, we talked about the package. They've got a package for Yonze playing quarterback. And uh, Tigers are burning a timeout already tonight. Looks like a Here little bit is. of confusion. But Yonze is going to line up with – had a shotgun – and he's going to fake it. Oh, and they saw that coming. They saw it coming. Nobody blocked uh, Christian Burnett. He's We've called his name quite a bit tonight. He's already made a couple of big plays on defense. And uh, Yonze was tackled for a loss back to the 23-yard line. That play lost two yards. Well, here it is, no man's land again as they bow their back and stop us. Or Actually, our own penalties are stopping us every time we get close to the yeah, red zone. Yeah, it would zone. have been a first down without the five-yard penalty. It was an unforced error on us. That was third and four. It would have been first and ten had it not been for the penalty. Now loss of two brings up fourth down six. Six-man front. Cotton, and we're going to call a timeout. That'll be our second of the first half. That comes with 8.40 to go here in the second quarter. We'll step aside and be back after this commercial break. Attention contractors, is your metal roofing provider slowing you down? Apex Metal Express fills orders within a week. 40-year finish warranty, 17 different colors, and multiple truss styles. Work more and wait less. In sports, the goal is to be the best. The same is true for Alpha Insurance. We work to make every quote, claim, or call a highlight. That's why customers consistently give Alpha high marks for service. Call Alpha and let us help you save on home, car, and life insurance. In Eufaula, call Alpha agents Keith or Brooke Ryan at 334-687-8268 or stop by our office at 1326A South Eufaula Avenue. Down heating and air broadcast booth at Tiger Stadium with the Tigers. Eufaula have a 4th and 6 from the 23-yard line of Faith. 8.40 to go here in the second quarter. They trail 8 to nothing. Charles Anderson leads Williamson 7 to nothing. Carroll trails Gulf Shores 7 to nothing. And last report from UMS Wright, it was tied at 7 between Headland and UMS Wright, the number one rated UMS Wright. Fourth down six. Tigers have two receivers to the left. One to the right of a tight end. Pew lined up to the right side. Harris behind the quarterback, Cotton. Six-man front. Cotton takes. He throws it. It's high. Intended for Tron Mitchell. There's a flag down, though. I believe it's going to be a lineman downfield. 50 for us had released down the field. It's going to be a lineman downfield. I would be surprised if it's not. Where the where it was thrown, there was a you follow lineman, which was about, about four yards downfield. We'll call holding. Holding on them. Down. Well, I am pleasantly surprised. So that is a great break for Eufaula. 
that will give the Tigers an automatic – it should be an automatic first down. Is it not defensive holding at all levels is an automatic first down? Uh, well, it should be 10 yards right. anyway, and that would be a first down. But they're still a, still discussing <sighs> – the official from in front of the Faith bench came over, but uh, you follow clap, so they're going to mark it off now against Faith, and it'll be a first down for the Tigers as Faith coaching staff wants an explanation. So I'm going to tell you what, Doug. I think we dodged a bullet there on well, the I, lineman downfield. I'm, I'm not so sure we didn't uh, get one we didn't deserve earlier. And there again, it's Wildgrass officials. They've never cared for us a whole lot, but so far it's been tit for tat, nothing bad, too bad either way. So first and 10 from the 13-yard line of Faith, deepest penetration of the night for you follow. They're going to throw it to Tron Mitchell. Mitchell makes a man miss. He's inside the five. He's going to go down to the two. It'll be first and goal Tigers after an 11-yard gain. Uh, just, a, just a quick screen to the outside from Cotton to Tron Mitchell. That's Mitchell's second reception of the night. He's been quiet. He had a big fourth quarter up at – down over, over at Early County. And um, – this Tigers first and goal from the two-yard line, 8.20 to go here in the uh, first quarter. Or se- first half, I'm sorry. We're going to send Yonze back out. He's not used to carrying the ball. I'm not so sure that we don't just shouldn't give the ball to Harris or something in this situation. Not worry about getting Yonze some stats, but he's going to play quarterback here. Jay Moss is in the backfield with Yonze. Yonze is going to be hit, and he is struggling. He's going to get down to the one-yard line. A one-yard gain for Yonze. You know, it's a situation where he, you said he's not used to carrying the ball. Scary he was up, upright. He looked yeah. like. They, and they're going to leave him in there. I'm going to tell you something. He needs to get down hey, Everybody his... knows he's getting the ball in this situation. Maybe let it, I, I'd hate to let him throw it. But, I'm a, well, Cotton's coming back in now. When he's in that situation, even the North Koreans know who's carrying the ball. <laughs> that actually, where they spotted him, it was no gain. They put him down back at, just inside the two-yard line. He probably picked up a half a yard, but that was it. Tigers in the G-line set, 7-22 and counting here in the first half. They trail 8 to nothing. It's going to be a handoff into Boxing. the end zone. Boxing. Nick Nick Floyd, two yards for the Tiger touchdown. That was a very nice drive for the Tigers. It was kept alive by the defensive holding that time. But uh, a sustained drive from the Tiger 25-yard line it ends up with a touchdown. Tigers move 75 yards in a bunch of plays. We'll have to add them up for you. Tigers going to go for two here, try to tie this game as they trail 8-6. to six. Chasing points already, but that's okay. Uh, quick update, Charles Henderson has gone up 13 to nothing over Williamson at this point. A quick update uh, from Wally and, and the crew over there. No, they're going to line up in the G line once again, and Faith is right in there all tight. Watch for the Tigers to possibly throw the ball here. They're going to hand it inside to, to in. Jay Moss, and he is in. We are tied, 8-8. Eight to eight. That was just an inside trap play that time as Moss lined up at wing on the right side. We uh, came out like we're going to bootleg. We handed it back off inside, going back to the left side. And uh, good hard running by Moss that time, and we're tied at eight. That was a that was a huge drive, Doug, to say the least. Uh, Seven eleven to go here in the first half, but to to tie this ball game when it looked like we might fall behind by two touchdowns. Tigers earlier. have looked good. I mean, it, they've moved the ball. It's been penalties that stop drives for us, and we had a five yard one there. We were hoping didn't stop it, and it, it actually did. But it was the penalty, the holding penalty. On, I guess, the receiver going out is what it looked like. Uh, the Faith got called again. They kept the drive alive, and then the Tigers put up eight. So, you know, short of the pick six, the Tigers have looked good here in a quarter and a half. Right. Well, the Tigers have been ranked as high as ninth this year themselves. Faith comes into this game ranked ninth. And rankings mean absolutely nothing in a game and when you get to the playoffs. But the Tigers have looked good at times this year. It's just been a – Lately, until the fourth quarter of early county, we just haven't. If the Tigers play like this and can avoid the turnovers, and we talked about the pregame, if the Tigers could avoid the turnovers, they could be in this game. Wingate kicking off. Let's see if we have any razzle-dazzle here out of Wingate tonight. Big hole over here in front of the Ufala bench. Going to pooch it. It's going to come down. Be, oh. They're going to run together, and very effective as they fall down at the 25-yard line. That was very effective. He kicked it. One player came back. One came up. They ran together, 
and uh, fell down to the 25-yard line. That's where probably, Faith will take over. Probably fortunate. That's the safety, number eight. He probably plays something on offense, too, but who gathered that ball in uh, for Faith and uh, did a good job of holding in onto it as his own player hit him from behind. Uh, if that ball would have came loose, that could have been huge for the Tigers. 13 to nothing. Uh, I'm excuse me, 13 to seven now. An update, Headland. Headland? That's all. That's what it says. Man. Carl's giving us some updates. Uh, he's got uh, a pipeline to that. We appreciate it. Quick snap from Faith. They throw the wide receiver screen to the outside. And, boy, good play by Nick Floyd coming up. Yonze came out from his end position, and it's a one-yard gain out there uh, for Faith. That quarterback is so fast with that. Yonze usually gets out there and gets in the throwing lane. He's playing to the wide side of the field each time or, or almost every time that I've noticed. Uh, but he can't quite get back there to get into that throwing lane if the quarterback's so quick. Big Pat Screws is playing nose tackle for the Tigers right now as they're in a three-man front. Second and nine for Faith. They'll hand it off inside to the big back. He breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. He bulls his way forward across the 30, up around the 31-yard line. That's going to be a gain of five on that play. He'll bring up third down and four. One other quick update, uh, Keith. I, I'm guessing Destin's giving us a score. 45 to nothing. Lakeside's losing to Jackson Academy. Kind of expected that one, Jackson. Kind of a powerhouse and usually makes the Chiefs with an early exit every year. Late shifting around by the Tiger defense. They're actually going to run the Wildcat, and uh, Ufala's going to get into the backfield. Jay Moss brings him down for a loss back to the 29-yard line. That's a two-yard loss, and we're going to see the first punt of the night, most likely from Faith. And that was number one there, uh, speedy guy trying to carry the ball there that lost that yardage. So the first three and out of the night for either team is going to go uh, to faith. And unless they try to fake it on fourth and six from their 29-yard line, Nick Floyd's going to drop back to return this for the Tigers. It's been an adventure on the punt return game for you follow all has. season. Quick snap. They, it's going to be a shank straight up in the air. You follow. Look, get away, get, get away, get away. Out of this. It takes a lateral bounce. It's going to be down to the 42-yard line of Faith. That's only a uh, an 18-yard punt. Tigers have the Rams rattled a little bit here, and will take over in Faith territory. They're going to mark it out at the 43-yard line. Excuse me. The Tigers already in uh, Faith territory. Ball on the far hash mark in front of the Faith bench with 5.13 to go in the second quarter of play. You follow fifth possession, their best starting field position of the night at the 43-yard line of Faith. First time starting in Faith territory. Cotton takes it. He's looking to throw. He's going to throw it down the field. Has a man there. Mitchell. Mitchell goes. He gets it. He's getting down at the one-yard line. 42 yards. They're going to spot him, I believe, either at the one- or two-yard line, but a beautiful, perfect pass that time from Cotton to Mitchell, and the Tigers are in business first and goal at the two. They say the two-yard line, so 41 yards on that pass play. The Tigers looking to take their first lead of the night. Tigers got good field position. They tried to make them pay on first down, and it was a beautiful pass play. Just good coverage by the defense. They were running stride for stride, but a perfect pass beats good defense every time, and that time it was a perfect pass, a good catch by Mitchell, and the Tigers had it. Knocking on the door at the two-yard line. Harris is the back in the backfield. They will hand it to Harris. Harris into the end zone, standing up. Touchdown, Tigers, and the Tigers lead. The Tigers lead 14-8. to eight. Great job by the Tigers there. They, uh, The last play, uh, Mitchell did a great job of ducking a shoulder, making him think it was going to be that quick turnaround, and he got behind the receiver and a perfect pass from Cotton. Uh, sets up the touchdown run by Mitchell. Tigers come out in the swinging gate, and uh, they're minus a lineman. Patrick Screws is checking in. And the points are a rolling for Region 2. Charles Henderson up 20 to nothing now over Williamson. There's a snap. The kick is up. Kick from Wingate is good. So the Tigers lead 15 to 8. 15 unanswered points, Doug. Tigers had 28 unanswered points last week or two weeks ago at Early County, and uh, they have pretty much so they've shut out the Faith offense so far tonight through um, through 
nearly 20 minutes of game action. All right, the only camera we got is on that scoreboard. You may have to get in there and teach those officials how to add. There they go. Well, he added one point. That's all. Hey, <laughs> I am not going to say a word to the officials tonight. They are doing a great job so right. far. Y'all heard that, folks, at the 435 mark in the second quarter. Keith proclaimed no official, no no words to officials tonight, so we're in good shape. That was a that was a forty three a two play forty three yard drive that only took thirty eight seconds. Two plays, yeah, that's a great pass and uh, it looked good. We got ten points now. Maybe by halftime we'll have, have our fifteen on the board. You know, there's been penalties there go, go both ways so far, and it's all you can ask for. It seems like it's been a very well call game oh, yeah. thus far. Yeah. So. They are playing our receivers tight. There's a couple times I was wanting uh, interference. We hadn't had got that, but uh, no complaining. This Uh-oh, this time it's going to be basically, and we uh, caught the ball. ball. Oh, did we catch it? Yes. Oh, he's so, a flag. Why would he you don't have to give him the opportunity to catch it in that situation. Unless he, unless he, called, a, unless he called a fair catch. Unless he called a fair yeah, catch. I and I did not see a fair catch be called. The head official's coming up, and they're agreeing. I don't, geez, I mean, it went 10 yards. They're going to call interference on us. You can take the guy out unless he did interfere. Well, you ain't going to say anything, but I will. Wiregrass official. So that's <laughs> I mean, we, we uh, blocked the guys out of the way. We recovered the ball right there at the 12 yards from, from the line. They're saying uh, interference. Uh, you're allowed to go down and take the guy out as they got caught uh, – Napping there. Tigers should have the ball at the 48 yard line. A big, big break for the Rams. And that's going to be 15 yards from there. So that's going to give them the ball inside the 40 yard line of Yafala. Yep, they give it to the, the 37 yard line. That And an interference penalty on top of that. I just. Uh... Mm. Uh, that was a good time. It was a, a kind of a pooched kick, but it was almost an onside kick, basically. They hand it off to the running back who sweeps the left side and goes out of bounds after about a one-yard gain. We have a player down in the center of the field. So you follow started at the 43-yard line of Faith on their last possession. That time, uh, now Faith starts in the 37-yard line of Ufala. So. There's an injured player on the field. It looks like it may take a minute, so we're going to step aside for a commercial break and be back after this timeout. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. That's probably catch our coaches coming down to see where The family at Impressive Collision Center has been in business since 1940. That's impressive. Your transportation is one of the largest investments you have, so keep it looking new at Impressive. From a major crash to a small dent, Impressive can help. Now Impressive. They work closely with all insurance companies and give you a great price on your minor mishaps. Wow, Impressive. And don't forget to check out all the accessories from install winches, brush guards, and bed covers. Impressive. Give them a call. Impressive Collision Center, 317 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-4400. With the world changing all around us, everyone needs to be covered by insurance. So give Eric Glover with the Glover Agency a call and talk with Eric about auto, home, life, or last week's football game. Whatever your insurance needs, let Eric talk to you about being covered. The Glover Agency is located at 145 East Broad Street, Eufaula, Alabama. Call 334-687-0358. Second nine for Faith from the 30. Six yard line of you follow the late count this time as they're going to look to throw pressure late. Parker Simmons got to the quarterback. He's going to throw it late finally, and he finds a man there good enough for a first down or right at the first down sticks at the 27 yard line. That looks like a nine yard gain. That time we had good pressure in the backfield. It looked like we might come up with the sack. Quarterback maintained his composure, shifted back out to the right side, 
Kept his eyes downfield, found his receiver, picked up a first down, nine yards on the completion. First and 10. Faith from the 27 yard line. You follow a clock stop momentarily with 357 back in motion now. You follow leading 15 to 8. Faith led 8 to nothing after an interception return for touchdown about halfway through the first quarter. There's been 15 unanswered points by you follow since then. Faith now after a um, onside kick attempt by Ufala moving the ball into Tiger territory. I was going to say number seven was very animated. Something's going to him here. He got around the corner, and he's going to take it out of bounds. It'll be first and goal, Faith. This will be the deepest penetration for their offense tonight as he got down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal from the 10, a 17-yard gain on that throw and catch. And nothing fancy there. They just stood up, threw the ball to the outside. They had us outnumbered on the outside. Seven took it down the sidelines. That's Goodwill. He has been uh, a good player for them all night as he had a 55-yard reception earlier. He's got to be knocking on the door of, of, a, of 100 yards receiving here in the first half. But uh, space offense still has not put any points on the board other than a two-point conversion. There's a high snap. They hand it off to the back, and he is going to be tackled by Big Pat. Big Pat screws, got his hands on him, and brought him down after about a one-yard gain to the nine-yard line. By and large, other than one 17-yard run, Doug, the Tiger defense has done a good job against the running game of faith. They're going to hurry up here real quick against the Tigers. Tigers. There's a snap. They're going to throw it. They're going to throw it. It's going to be bobbled, but it was finally caught, and that was a great break for the Tigers because he he could have dropped that. It would have been second and goal from the nine. Instead, he caught it on the bobble and lost yardage back. He lost nine yards back to the 18-yard line. So it is thir- third and goal from the 18-yard line for Faith. It was going to be second and goal. It was second and goal from the nine. Are right, they going to line up number seven? They're shifting him around the coaching staff. It's on their hash mark over there. They're giving him a lot of instruction over there lined up against Coleman for the Tigers. Watch a screen here uh, from the Rams. They're going to call a timeout, timeout, I believe. Yes, timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well. Be back after this commercial break. Somebody cannot come to us. We go to them. It's something that we do on a regular basis, something we don't mind doing, and we work on a contingency basis. No one has to uh, pay us any money up front. They do not have to pay us unless we collect for them, unless we are successful in uh, resolving their case through a settlement or through trial. They don't have to pay us any money unless we get favorable results for them. If you're hurt in a car wreck, call Penn and Seaborn. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. No representation is made that the quality of the legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Sam Wise in Eufaula today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Now, back at Tiger Stadium, where it's third and goal from the 18-yard line of uh, for Faith, Tigers leading by a score of 15 to eight. Wow! Oh, no, 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 no. The, the junior quarterback, Jarrett Daughtry, he is going to be flanked by Christian Burnett, the senior running screen. back. They're Looks like to- a screen. They're going to throw it now in the end zone. They're there. It's oh. The receiver shoved the Ufala defensive back in the back, pushed him forward. He created separation, but he dropped the football, fortunately. It'll be fourth and goal for Faith from 18. Did you see that shove yeah, in the back? Yeah, Karma's there. In They're going to try the work. field goal here. They're bringing in their freshman kicker. He is, we watched him in warm-ups. He's a pretty good kicker. He gets um, the ball up very fast. And this is going to be from the 25-yard line, 35-yard field goal, right hash. So he's got to kick it back to the left with 2.10 to go in the second quarter. So fourth and goal from the 18. It will be a 35 right hash kick. Tigers all standing up here. Nobody in the down position as they're not sure. We jumped off sides. I'm not sure. That kick is no good, but I don't see any flags. As It looks like there was no flag. No flag. So the Tigers hold. That was a... That was well, a maybe very, it was a guy on the outside and he kind of half stepped forward. Maybe he was far enough back that he didn't get into the neutral zone there. And uh, nevertheless, the Tigers defense makes a stand 
Tigers will take over at the 20-yard line. Boy, that was a big, big stand by the Tiger defense because they got down inside with first and goal quickly, Doug. But uh, the Tigers turn them back and uh, stop them at the 18, if you follow. Only uh, 19 yards on that on that drive, as it turns out. Five-man front. Look for Harris here as the Tigers. Tigers all moved. moved. Dirty, bad snap. I don't know. We had uh, nine of the 11 going on different counts there, I think. Uh, it's going to cost the Tigers five when it's said and done. No place to be making those kind of uh, mistakes. No. They still have one timeout now with 2.04 to go, 40-second play clock. You're still okay, but you can't be doing that again. Well, they throw the ball real well, Doug. I tell you, I mean, we're we're down at our own 15-yard line. And, um, you know, I think if I'm a – With the one timeout, they could make us punt. Cotton takes it. He's going to oh throw it. Goodness. He was there, and he and throws an interception. God, Two turnovers now. Can you be, people? You don't do that deep in your own territory. The ball just sailed. Now, they play fundamentally sound. The safety came over, and he made the interception. So, they're plus two on turnovers now. Doug, one led to directly to a turnover on a pick six. Yeah, that, that's what this one made, too, uh, into, into points. And he, he caught that ball right at his shoe tops. It was very close to being on the ground, but he made a good catch. 159 to go. They're right back in business at the 32-yard line. I mean, that you could have run it down to nothing, but uh, big chance there. The Tigers take a timeout as they were up ready to snap the ball quick, and the Tigers take a timeout, and they're going to talk about it. Uh, as Faith quickly came out and was ready to, to run a play there. Let, real quick, let's go over some of our sponsors for this year. Penn and Seaburn. Uh, Benny Whitehead Trucking, Alpha Insurance, Impressive Auto, Works Consulting, Apex Metal Buildings, uh, State Farm Insurance with Sam Wise does a lot for us, and Brown Heating and Air Condition. Of course, the broadcast booth named after them, Glover Insurance, Wiregrass Realty, First Franklin Financial, Chick-fil-A of you follow us at our coaches show all year long, uh, Benny Whitehead Trucking, Automatic Gas, uh, Nathan Hudson Enterprises also, Precision Body Works, uh, State Farm Insurance, Pam Freeman's also on board. Uh, Charles and Cindy Irvin is a sponsor of the of the uh, show. You follow Glass uh, sponsor also. Chester Chapel Church. Warren Taylor Photography has furnished our uh, cameras and video equipment all year long. We appreciate that. Country Club of Alabama Golf Course, Verizon of you follow. All are big parts of the broadcast. Tiger defense right back out after one play. Tigers had a penalty, and then they threw the interception. So, Faith looking. They're going to throw a screen. They set it up, set to, it the, up. to the uh, to Burnett. He is down the sidelines. He's going to be take, He's going to take it down to about the 15-yard line, so 17 yards on the screen play. It'll be first down for Faith from, from there. And, Doug, I was saying it as um, you can't. You can't fault us for being aggressive, but we could have punched one in before halftime. They get the ball to start the second half. But if you could just go to halftime with a lead, that would be a huge victory considering their touchdown was a was a pick six. Uh, they throw it to the outside to the right. It's going to be caught inside for about a four-yard gain down to the 12-yard line. We'll see where they mark it down. It looks like a four-yard gain on the on the completion. Second six. Keeps the clock moving with 132 and counting in the first half. You fall leading 15 to eight. Plenty of time, Doug. The Tigers are going to have to keep them out. One timeout remaining for Faith. None for you, Fala. Going to throw into the end zone. It's high. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. With 110 to go. The interception, so two turnovers, two touchdowns. Two picks, two touchdowns off of them, yep. How many yards was that? 12 yards. Three pass plays. Well, I'm going to hurt some feelings, but I still disagree with throwing the ball. That deep, under two minutes, you get a 40-second play clock. You could have took it down to – but nevertheless, it's going to be – Starting over as they line up for the extra point. Kicks up. Kick is good. So we're tied at 15. Uh, 
Only uh, took 48 seconds for Faith to put that touchdown on the board. And now, Doug, you're going to have the ball back. No timeouts with a minute eight to go in the first half. You know, that's why we were saying, you know, we should be just be content to go in with a lead at halftime. We could have probably done it with they had one timeout left. We'd just run the ball. We'd have had to make them use their timeouts. We could have run it down to just nothing. Tigers have not punted here in the first half at all. Oh, how quickly things turn around at the same time that was going on with us. Williamson threw a long touchdown pass. Charles Henderson up 20-8 to eight now, so kind of comes in waves there, I guess. Uh, UMS right 14, Headland 13 at the half. So, you know, the last couple of minutes have gone, has gone region, uh, <laughs> region one's way. As, uh, but uh, we'll see. They line up to kick. They did a pooch kick earlier. Lee Fallows suggested to it over there, yeah, they, ready for it. They pooched twice already tonight. Nick Floyd has returned it each time. This time they kick it a little deeper. Floyd will get it at the 21-yard line. He's looking to bring it back to the near side. And Big goodness. Hit. Once again, that is the running back, number 23. He is a fine-looking football player, yeah, the Christian big, Burnett. Big hit there. That's going to – the score and the big hit, they're going to they're gonna be pumped going into halftime. We're, we're in for a shootout here in the second half. And surprise to nobody, like I like to say, even the North Koreans knew we were going to return it to this side. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You knew they knew All as good. well coached as uh, Faith is. A 103. Did they go for six here or what? Yeah. They're going to throw the ball. Four. Horn flushes. Is he going to uh, about- throw it? He just throws it away that time. That and nobody gonna- was open. No one was open. But you know what happens here 55 seconds after that incomplete pass. Yeah, you better run that clock out. Um, and I, I need to make a new category because I don't know if you caught yourself there, but uh, Cotton, Cotton probably appreciates you comparing him to Horn, but you you called Horn on that incomplete. Pass. Boy, that's that's that's, that's, going that's back living in the years. past. Two years that old. <laughs> Second and ten from the 20, 28 yard line. Cotton calling for the snap. He no. takes it, looking to throw, going to throw. Oh, they were holding our receiver. Okay, we're going to have – if we punt and they block it or something, I'll tell you what, I may send a text message at halftime. Why in the world are we not running out the clock, getting in and being happy? We'll be in time. We're fixing to give them the ball back or they can come after the punt. That play took a good punt. We return. have – we have – we have – we've run 13 seconds off so far on this possession. And they still got one timeout. We have none. Look for a draw play here. And they'll burn that They'll time out, I'm sure. We'll only use a few more seconds. He, that's going to be intentional grounding if no. you don't watch out. No, that was a – he had Harris there, but that's incomplete. They threw it – that that play took four seconds. They still have a timeout left in 46 seconds, and we're going to give them the ball up around midfield probably. Three straight incompletions on this possession. Still – That looks like something Bri- uh, Harshland would have done at Auburn, I'm going to be honest with you. It's just it's – just, if they if they score here, they got a good return guy back. Uh, Anderson, fortunately, is back in the game. He's he's fine. Uh, little number eight, the safety's back deep for them. Forty six seconds. You could have took it to halftime there, but uh, didn't work out that way. Anderson's yeah. going to kick. It's oh, gonna nice, be a nice shot. Point. He's right there under. It's actually number one. The speedster makes a guy miss. Makes another guy miss. He's across the fifty. Boom! Yonze. I'm telling you, he hit him so hard, not only did the dash lights come on, the airbags came out. <laughs> that was a huge hit. That was the hardest hit I've seen this year. But they but but they had the ball at the Tiger 48-yard line with 35 seconds left. Absolutely. They're going to have they're going to be throwing it at the end zone. Absolutely. You, you can look for a pass to number seven here. As number one took his helmet off, he kind of was going off the field to where there was nobody over there. And he got redirected over towards the coaching staff. I'm not sure he knows what part of the state he's in right this moment. But uh, they've got a chance to put some more points up on the board here in the in, in just a minute's time. You know, this is a first guess because I said it before they ever scored the last touchdown that we might want to be content just to run the clock out and, and screen, go into halftime. Screen, screen. They threw a screen. It's oh, dropped, goodness. fortunately. They had it set up. 
and they and the running back dropped the screen pass. That'll stop the clock with exactly 30 seconds on the clock here in the first half. Still plenty of time for them, though. One time out left. I, you think they had to have been over just grinning from ear to ear at another opportunity, and that's only taking what uh, 15, 18 seconds off. Less the clock. than 20 seconds off wow. the clock. We appreciate Marcus telling us he didn't think the band could play, but we've been talking about that all year long. The bands have been doing it on offense. and they But we're not, not playing right now, so why not? Second down and 10. Going to throw it. Daughtry throws it over the middle and incomplete. It'll be third and 10 now. That was the first bad pass I've seen that young man throw since he stepped off the bus. Yeah. So third and 10. 24. These plays aren't taking very long at all, Doug. Six seconds only went off the clock on that play. That really kind of was a slow developing play. So they still have a timeout remaining. And um, UMS scored again 28 to 13 at the half in that game. So they really Man, it went from 14 13 to 28 13. Goodness. So here, no play clock on the. F- field for us to be able to see, but it seems like they took a long time. Third down 10, they're going to throw it quickly. They throw it downfield. Caden Ingram is there. Good play. He he tips it away out of bounds. That stops the clock with 18 seconds. That's fourth and 10, though. Doug, we may see them punt it on fourth and 10 from the 48. It looks like they're going to do that. You know, I don't know if I'm them. Well, I don't know. We wouldn't leave you follow, but with about eight seconds, it would still give them a shot. They've got half the punt team out and Yes, it appears they are going to punt. Now, he shanked the last one, but uh, still, if it takes 10 seconds, that's when you'd think you fall would come out and take a shot at the end zone, but we'll see. Spread all the way across the field on this punt. A lot of gaps to go through. Six straight incompletions combined for each team. Kind of a shanked punt. It went off the side of the foot. A hit. It takes a big faith bounce, but then a neutral bounce. But that'll roll dead under 10 seconds. They'll stop the clock finally with 6.2 seconds left to go on the – at the 21-yard line of Eufaula. If we air this ball up here, I may come unglued. So, if we take a knee like we should, we'll go to halftime tied at 15. You know, once again, Doug, I mean, you say, you know, if if if, if you told me, hey, we'll go to the halftime tied, yeah, I'd have said, hey, sounds great. But we had a very good chance to go to halftime with a lead. Two interceptions have led to all 15 of their points up to this point. We are in a... Uh, safe formation. Uh, Cotton under center is just going to take a knee. They'll receive the second half kickoff, but that's okay. The clock runs out. Tied at 15. We're in for a big second half here at Tiger Stadium. So from the Brown Heat and Air broadcast booth, we'll step aside for a commercial break. Be back with some halftime comments. You're listening to You Fall High School Tiger Football. We'll be back in a moment. The family at Impressive Collision Center has been in business since 1940. That's impressive. Your transportation is one of the largest investments you have, so keep it looking new at Impressive. From a major crash to a small dent, Impressive can help. Now Impressive. They work closely with all insurance companies and give you a great price on your minor mishaps. Wow, Impressive. And don't forget to check out all the accessories from install winches, brush guards, and bed covers. Impressive. Give them a call. Impressive Collision Center, 317 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-4400. Hey, Tiger fans. This is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty, and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! Precision Body Works is a state-of-the-art collision facility dedicated to providing customers with outstanding service and a quality repair experience. We have been serving you fall in the surrounding areas for over 20 years and have earned a reputation as being a premier collision repair center. Precision Body Works uses environmentally friendly PPG water-based paint and also offers 24-hour record service as well as top-of-the-line accessories from such brands as Cam Locker, Ranch Hand, Retracts, Weston, and WeatherTech. We are located at 1210 North Eufaula Avenue or call us at 334-687-4700. Easy Metal Building Kits, Pole Barns, and Metal Roofing Supplies. Apex Metal Express carries multiple kit sizes and colors with at-home DIY instruction. Apex Metal Express, fast delivery, superior quality, excellent customer service. Back 
In sports, the goal is to be the best. The same is true for Alpha Insurance. We work to make every quote, claim, or call a highlight. That's why customers consistently give Alpha high marks for service. Call Alpha and let us help you save on home, car, and life insurance. In Eufaula, call Alpha agents Keith or Brooke Ryan at 334-687-8268 or stop by our office at 1326A South Eufaula Avenue. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries and home and auto insurance from State Farm. Combine and save. Call State Farm agent Sam Wise in Eufaula today. Benny Whitehead Incorporated has called Eufaula home since 1965. Today, the family-owned business owns and operates 119 tractors and trailers and employs over 150 people. Benny Whitehead is nationally known as a leader in safety and keeping the air clean and fuel consumption low. Benny Whitehead Incorporated loves Eufaula and would like to wish Lakeside and Eufaula a safe and successful season. With the world changing all around us, everyone needs to be covered by insurance. So give Eric Glover with the Glover Agency a call and talk with Eric about auto, home, life, or last week's football game. Whatever your insurance needs, let Eric talk to you about being covered. The Glover Agency is located at 145 East Broad Street, Eufaula, Alabama. Call 334-687-0358. Proudly serving the Eufaula area for over 30 years, Wirtz Consulting is here to help you with all of your IT needs. Call Chris Wirtz at 334-695-2820. When it's football time, we at First Franklin Financial are big fans of our local teams, just like you. We've been part of the community for over 75 years, and when you need money for repairs or emergencies, we'll help you play offense. We offer fixed rate loans up to $15,000 with easy payment plans and fast approvals. Visit 1FFC.com to find the location near you. Legal, all loan terms and applicable APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria for the loan size requested and may require collateral. Georgia Residential Mortgage License number 5656.
Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. Hey Tiger fans, Daniel Pulley here, your local Chick-fil-A Ufala owner-operator. We are so excited to be the official sponsor of the weekly Ufala Tiger Coaches Show for the 2022 football season. Join us for the live show at Chick-fil-A Ufala every Thursday starting at 6 p.m. Our incredible team is ready to serve you. And don't forget, eat more chicken. Hey Tiger fans, this is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! Easy Metal Building Kits, Pole Barns, and Metal Roofing Supplies. Apex Metal Express carries multiple kit sizes and colors with at-home DIY instruction. Apex Metal Express. Fast delivery, superior quality, excellent customer service. Somebody cannot come to us, we go to them. It's something that we do on a regular basis, something we don't mind doing, and we work on a contingency basis. No one has to... Uh, pay us any money up front. They do not have to pay us unless we collect for them. Unless we are successful in uh, resolving their case through a settlement or through trial. They don't have to pay us any money unless we get favorable results for them. If you're hurt in a car wreck, call Penn and Seaborn. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. No representation is made that the quality of the legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other lawyers. Benny Whitehead Incorporated has called you Fall Home since 1965. Today, the family-owned business owns and operates 119 tractors and trailers and employs over 150 people. Benny Whitehead is nationally known as a leader in safety and keeping the air clean and fuel consumption low. Benny Whitehead Incorporated loves you Fall and would like to wish Lakeside and you follow a safe and successful season. If you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Sam Wise in Eufaula today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Precision Body Works is a state-of-the-art collision facility dedicated to providing customers with outstanding service and a quality repair experience. We have been serving Eufaula and the surrounding areas for over 20 years and have earned a reputation as being a premier collision repair center. Precision Body Works uses environmentally friendly PPG water-based paint and also offers 24-hour record service as well as top-of-the-line accessories from such brands as Cam Locker, Ranch Hand, Retrax, Weston, and WeatherTech. We are located at 1210 North Eufaula Avenue or call us at 334-687-4700. Back at Tiger Stadium where the Tigers and the Rams are all knotted up at 15. We were ready to come back. Keith's getting an explanation from our coaches, hopefully on that onside kick that turned into an unsportsmanlike and a 15-yard penalty and, and all that. But uh, with 4.41 here to go in the halftime of the team's getting ready to come back out. A little bit of stats for you from the first half. It's uh, not a lot of impressive, but the thing that jumps out is the two interceptions – uh, that the Tigers had, both of them led to points for Faith. One was a pick six, and uh, the other one was uh, an interception that immediately turned into points, so their offense was able to punch it in. 
But, you know, the big play of the night for uh, Faith was the initial play from the uh, line of scrimmage was the 55-yard pass to uh, number seven for them, the receiver. Uh, and that was the majority of their offense uh, for the whole first half. Uh, Daltrey, uh, quarterback, he was um, 11 for 16 for 129 yards. But when you look at the rushing side, they rushed the ball nine times in the first half for only eight positive yards. Faith only had 137 total yards of offense in the first half. On the side of the Tigers, the Tigers had uh, 16 rushes for 67 yards, most of that coming by Harris, who had a, a two-yard touchdown carry uh, for the Tigers. He has 10 carries for 66 yards, but uh, the Tigers were 16 rushes for 67 yards on the ground, eight for 16 through the air for 98 yards, but two interceptions. Gives the Tigers 165 yards of total offense to face 137. Yeah, you're right, uh, Doug. 31 offensive plays for Eufaula, 165 yards of offense, nine first downs for Eufaula. 29 offensive plays for Faith, 137 yards of offense, six first downs for Faith. The big difference in the game, even though it's tied at 15 with the two turnovers, one uh, pick six directly led to a uh, Faith touchdown. The other uh, interception late in the half, less than two minutes to go in the first half. The Tigers turned it over again on an interception, and uh, Faith punched that in with a minute 10 to go to uh, to tie the game at 15. So um, just an unfortunate uh, turn of events if you're a Tiger fan. The Tigers have played a good first half, uh, as, as evidenced by the stats. Um, the Tigers outgaining um, the Rams by 28 yards in the first half, and that's saying a lot considering the Rams had 55 yards, as you said, Doug, on the first play, the fir- their first snap of the game. But there's hidden yards that you don't see. They had 50 more yards on an interception return, uh, which would be, uh, I guess you'd say that's, that's return yardage. That's all-purpose yardage. And um, that uh, really, even though we're tied, that's a difference uh, in, the, in, the, in the Tigers either having a lead here or not. You know, if you look at it, the Tiger defense bent, gave some yards, but they, they really stiffened when, when Faith got down there a couple of times. They did finally give up the touchdown pass. That was a 12-yard pass play uh, there late in the half. But the Tiger defense did a pretty good job of stiffening when they got down there. If you know, really the two turnovers without the two turnovers, Doug, Tigers potentially could have a two touchdown lead here in the first half. You know, you don't know whether or not Faith would have the game would have played out maybe differently. Uh, maybe they they call things differently or whatever, but uh, two touchdowns off two turnovers for Faith. We so, talked about how impressive it was that they made adjustments so fast. They come out, they thought they could drop back and throw the ball against the Tigers with such a, a quarterback being so accurate. They found out with Yonze, uh, uh, pressing down on them. That just, they didn't have the time for it. They immediately made adjustments and they made adjustments. It's been the screens and the, uh, the underneath screens and the, the quick outs to the outside that, uh, kept them afloat during that first half. And they were able to connect uh, down the sideline for their, for their touchdown pass. But Keith, I've, I've really been surprised. Uh, yes, Yonze, uh, got to him, but I'm surprised they, they were doing it, trying to single block him. I'm surprised they hadn't tried to double team him and uh, get the ball back to the receiver on a crawl. That first crossing route was a 55-yard crossing route for big yardage. And you got to think at some point they're going to try to go back to that and try to find a way to block Yonze and slow down the rush. We haven't seen the other defensive back. I think it's Mitchell since he went out uh, banged up earlier. We don't know if he'll be back in the second half or not. But uh, Parker Simmons has come in, created some Havoc in the backfield, but unable to gather him. I mean, he's chased him around, but hadn't been able to pull him down for the loss. The quarterback, Daltrey, uh, lost nine yards, two consecutive plays uh, running because uh, Yonze got a hold to him. So it's going to be about adjustments. We know Faith is very well coached and and uh, can make some adjustments. Let's see if the Tigers – the Tigers really – I don't think it's about as much adjustments with them as it is – Let's just don't make the big mistakes. Let's see, you know, it, it could come in the kicking game. Their punting game hasn't been great. Um, uh, we, I think we punted one time. Anderson was back out there. He's, uh, uh, you know, it was good to see him come back after that first hit on the sideline. That kind of, we hadn't seen a lot out of him since that hit as he started off the game with two or three catches. Yeah, they, haven't, they have not targeted him since. But up to that point, I, I don't believe we had targeted Mitchell any. And, uh, Mitchell's had two or three receptions since since that time with Anderson. I know he has two, and um, he had the big one for uh, 
down to uh, three yards down. Three down. Three down. Three down. Three down. How many receptions do you have? He's only got three receptions three. that I have for the uh, 57 yards and three receptions. Where right. um, the five foot that actually set up in a plug when the tigers come back to the side like the horn. off the air momentarily it was just that quick yeah so we're back i believe we're back if uh you can hear us if you will just shoot us a comment we we lost uh our internet connection briefly here but uh i believe we're back and we're about to have the kickoff here wingate has the ball on the tee at the 40 yard line he'll approach he'll pooch it this time it's going to come down at the 31 yard line they're going to return it they break ah! the wave down the sidelines goes their safety and he's going to take it. Oh, he's stayed like he stepped out of bounds. They did say he stepped yeah, he out. Yeah, stepped out of bounds at the 19-yard line. So, so there defeats the purpose of an of a pooch kick, Doug. I mean, you're giving them the ball all, all, already out at the 30 30 yard line when you pooch it, and well, they make one man miss. What was weird about that pooch kick is he pushed it to the sideline over here, but all our guys went straight down the field. They they were covering their lanes, but they should have pinched over here to the sideline. He made one or two guys miss. And they're inside the red zone just like that. You know, that's almost like a turnover. That's hidden yards. That's return yards there. I mean, that is a 50-yard uh, return of the kickoff, the second-half kickoff. And, um, well, special teams have not been our strong point this year. Tigers trailed eight to nothing after a pick six. They went back to take a fifteen to eight lead. And they handed it all off inside, but a good job by the Tigers staying home and bringing them down for a two yard loss. That's a big running back, Christian Burnett, but a good, good stop, two yard losses. And I'm impressed, Doug, with the Tigers, the way they've stopped this Graham running game. So far, so good on the the defensive side. So they come out, they try to punch it right up the middle, look for that quick out to the outside here as they try to spread the Ufala defense. Empty backfield. Three receivers right, two to the left. They're going to throw. Tip. It is tipped and incomplete. Yonze Pierre, I believe, on the tip. It'll be third down and 12 after the incomplete pass. This will be huge here. The Tigers can hold them scoreless after the kickoff return to the 19-yard line of Ufala. Third and 12 from the 21. I don't know if they have a draw play in their arsenal, Doug, but they might try it here to try to well, they definitely got a screen right up the middle. We've seen it several times. They turn you fall loose on the rush. But it's only back, a three-man rush. Empty forward. backfield, so it'll be uh, snap to Daughtry. He's looking to throw. He throws it. It is tipped. He gets intercepted. Mitchell on the interception. The defensive lineman on the tip ball, tip drill. He's down the sidelines at the 40. He'll go down to the 45-yard line of Ufala. <laughs> that was um, Jamario Mitchell, the senior defensive lineman, after the ball was tipped. He came up with the interception, and he returned it a long way, all the way back out to the 46-yard line. Turnovers, Doug. We forced a turnover. They only had seven on the entire season. I said it would be big if we could get one from them. That was huge. That prevented their points, and the Tigers with good field position here. All 15 points for the Rams has come off of interceptions from the Tigers. Let's see if the Tigers can turn an interception into points for them. From the 46. Hand off to Harris. Harris makes one man miss. He takes it forward for two yards to the 47-yard line. Maybe, yeah, the 47. We'll call it a two-yard gain. 
Geez, we got to do something to get this crowd in there. They've only got a 150 folks over there on the far side, but they make more racket than our whole sideline over here. Actually, uh, we got a player down again, and that looks like to be Pew, one of our uh, receivers. Uh, as they tend to him, we'll take a quick commercial timeout. We'll be back in the Brown Heating and Air Conditioning broadcast booth after this commercial break. The family at Impressive Collision Center has been in business since 1940. That's impressive. Your transportation is one of the largest investments you have, so keep it looking new at Impressive. From a major crash to a small dent, Impressive can help. Now Impressive. They work closely with all insurance companies and give you a great price on your minor mishaps. Wow, Impressive. And don't forget to check out all the accessories from install winches, brush guards, and bed covers. Impressive. Give them a call. Impressive Collision Center, 317 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-4400. We're back, Tiger Stadium, second down eight as uh, Caviante Pugh made his way off the field in his own power. Dug it. it looks like he might have just got the wind knocked out of him uh, on the previous play. He needs to get back in there, obviously, for the Tigers. He is a big part of this Tiger offense, uh, the big uh, junior tight end. Second down eight, though, Tigers will go with uh, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Harris in a pistol formation behind the quarterback. Cotton. It'll be a straight drop back by Cotton. He throws a fade route. Has a man there, Mitchell. Uh, Ron catch. Mitchell. He catches it. A great catch. He went up and high pointed the ball down the 20 yard line. That play goes for 32 yards and a Tiger first. Actually, they're going to mark him at the 19. 33 yards. 33 yards and a Tiger first down. Great throw and catch. And the Tigers move the sticks. Three receivers to the field side, wide side left. One to the right is Tron Mitchell. Harris is the back behind the quarterback. It'll be Harris at right up the middle. He is the second level. He's going to take it ahead for nine yards to the 10 yard line. Nine yard gain that time. And Doug, I don't know if you saw that or not. 22 for Faith and Pat were kind of fighting all the way back behind the line of scrimmage. 22 is listed as six foot one, 175 pounds. So he's given up. Over 100 pounds to Big Pat. Second down one from the 10-yard line. Tigers looking to take the lead again in this ball game. It's been a good game so far. Harris takes it. He's hit behind the line. He's running hard, but he's not going to pick up. He, he goes down for about a loss of a half a yard on that play. It'll be third down and a yard and a half from just inside the 11-yard line. So we'll call it a loss of one on that play when all said and done, they marked it back to the 11. Looked like they were going to give him forward progress to almost the 10, but they ended up marking it back to the 11. So it's third down two. And uh, Tigers still stay in a spread formation here. Four down linemen for Faith. Tigers going on a delay count, but Mitchell, Mitchell kind of, they're going to call it, I believe, on us. We'll see. They, they are calling it on you follow that five-yard penalty. Faith jumped. But Mitchell, when they jumped, he went forward, and so that cost five yards against Ufala. Tigers, uh, after the big pass play, picked up nine yards on first down, and now they'll have third down and seven after second down and one. From the 16-yard line, Cotton throws it. Oh, it's this caught. Been interference. They did not call through a flag there. It was they had a hold of Mitchell all the way down, and uh, it's incomplete. Looked like Mitchell was going to come down with it, but it's incomplete. It'll be um, fourth down and seven after second down and one. He kind of had his arm uh, and locked in, maybe grabbed his shoulder pads and had his arm straight out, and it almost looked like he was shoving him, not holding him, but shoving him. And we're gonna. Wingate's going to attempt a 32-yard field goal. I thought that's a little far for him. But we'll see a quick snap, and they, they basically took it off the tee. Yeah. We did no block up No the chance. It was blocked immediately there. No chance. So both teams get deep penetration, and both teams um, miss field goals. There's an official over here in front of the Ufala bench trying to stop the clock, and which is, is stopped. But I'm not sure what the discussion – oh, they have a man down. I'm sorry. And I wanted to say there's a flag laying right under him. There is a flag as he's uh, it's one of their big guys. He's actually getting up now, number 61, but there's a flag right underneath them. I, 
could that be maybe that they ran over? I mean, because the pressure came right up the middle. You're not supposed to run over the snapper. I don't know if that's going to be the call or if it's – there may be a reason – a chop block, he's down. I have no idea, but well, he you're is, not supposed to go over the center. Number seven's the one ball. that had the penetration up the middle, and he was there straight over the center in a hurry. Now, I don't know if he got the gap. We'll have to see. But. The ball was at the 16-yard line. The flag is laying at the 24, eight yards in the backfield. So, I mean, the ball, the the the, the flag is laying but further back than where Wingate was trying to kick the ball from. So. I don't even think Wingate, did he? Did he, he actually no, get a foot on it? Never it, did. I was going to say it looked like it came off. The well, I say he, he may have. He may, he may have, but uh, but they were back there very, very fast. All right, 61 is up and running off the field fine. You know, he might have been the one that actually blocked it. He might have caught it in a in a southern region that uh, kept him from getting up in a hurry there because it's kind of what that looked like. Uh, but there's a long discussion. Uh, Jarrell standing out at the numbers, and the officials are – I don't know. Talking about who's picking up the tab for dinner is what it looks like. But there is a flag at the 24-yard line. It could be anything. Actually picking it they're up pointing, now. They're pointing, they're pointing towards the Ufala end. There's so a, a, a lady official they were talking about. They called it dead to. ball, personal foul on faith. So that would be, if that's the case, that would be their ball. Just a little deeper. Yeah, just a little deeper. So it it would have been from the 20 yard line. So it should be the 10 yard line. If I am correct, because any miss field goal goes to the 20 yard line, I believe, I don't know if that counts on uh, blocks or not, but I believe it'll be first and goal faith from the 10. If that's a lot, the, a lot's got to do whether it was blocked or whether it was just on the 10 and, and fumbled and recovered. And as they boo, they probably, uh, I, I'm assuming they, their fans must think, their fans must think it was you fall a ball. They pipe down now because uh, they realize their offense is on the field. So they're going to run the wide receiver screen. They do a good job of blocking it out there. And um, the pass is complete to Goodwill. And um, good job by Nick Floyd stringing that out. It'll be a gain of five. No, hesi- no hesitation there. As, uh, the quarterback, Daughtry, threw an interception the last pass. He comes out deep in his own territory and fires it for a six-yard gain all the way to the wide side of the field also. They do a good job blocking that on the, on the outside. Very good job. So second and five from the from the 16-yard line. They actually spotted that ball first and 10 from the 11. Going to hand it off to the back. Burnett, he stiff arms. He gets around the corner. He'll have a first down. He has more yards on that carry than he's had on any other carry tonight other than the 17-yard gain. He'll pick up 17 17- I'm sorry, 16, 16 yards on that play. He, he had 19 the first time he touched it, but uh, that was pretty much it. He now has 40 yards on six carries after that 16-yard gain. First and 10, Faith from the 32-yard line. We're still tied at 15. Tigers led, trailed 8 to nothing, then they led 15 to 8. They give up a late touchdown to Faith after a, a, an interception by Ufala. And that's where we've stood since uh, late in the second quarter. First and 10, motion. They're going to hand it off inside. Burnett with a lot of running room. He is going to take it up near midfield to the 49-yard line. 17 yards on that play. They found something that's working. 33 yards on the last two running plays for Burnett. He is a good-looking athlete. Doug, you can only hope that maybe he gets tired. He's playing on both sides of the ball, but he doesn't look any worse for the wear here. Um as he's played literally every snap of this football game so and far. We just took the whole defensive front out, and I guess they're going to talk to him, Yonze included, on the sideline. Three new guys up front for this snap. We're going to hand it off again. Burnett, he's going to be hit at the line. Caden Ingram trying to bring him down, finally brings him down after an eight-yard gain to the 43-yard line. And, and, Doug, this has been one screen pass. Now 61's back down again on the ground for them. He was in on defense, he's in on offense, and uh, he's down again, taking his helmet off here at the 48-yard line. We'll step aside and take a commercial break. We'll be back after this. With the world changing all around us, everyone needs to be covered by insurance. So give Eric Glover with the Glover Agency a call and talk with Eric about auto, home, life, or last week's football game. Whatever your insurance needs, let Eric talk to you about being covered. 
The Glover Agency is located at 145 East Broad Street, Eufaula, Alabama. Call 334-687-0358. In sports, the goal is to be the best. The same is true for Alpha Insurance. We work to make every quote, claim, or call a highlight. That's why customers consistently give Alpha high marks for service. Call Alpha and let us help you save on home, car, and life insurance. In Eufaula, call Alpha agents Keith or Brooke Ryan at 334-687-8268 or stop by our office at 1326A South Eufaula Avenue. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. Does your IT infrastructure or computer equipment have you sidelined? Don't throw in the towel yet. Call Chris Wirtz at Wirtz Consulting at 334-695-2820. Back at Tiger Stadium where uh, Damare Moore, he was a captain for Faith, 6'1", 300-pound senior, defensive tackle and tackle on offense. Goes off the field for the second time uh, in the last uh, two or three minutes of game action for Faith. And um, it'll be second down and two. As Faith has got four running plays good for 44, 46 yards coming off their goal line from the 11-yard line. They have second and two from the 43 of you follow. Shotgun snap. They'll hand it off to Burt. I'm sorry, different running back this time. Tire defense penetrates this time. Big Pat screws. Uh, tackles him for a loss back to the 46-yard line. That is a loss of three on that play. And it'll bring up a third down possession play, third down and five from the 46-yard line of Ufala. Yeah, he didn't hit the line like number 23 is. He, uh, he kind of took a couple of steps and saw some folks and went to change directions. There was nowhere to go, and he lost a few yards. Let's hope that uh, kind of stops it here as it makes it third and six. They tried to get the Tigers to jump last time to get a free five, and it didn't work. So from the 46-yard line, you follow the first down would come at the 41. Shotgun formation for Daltrey. He'll take the shotgun snap. He'll play flake. Looking to throw. He's going to let it fly deep. He has a man there. It's going to be caught, caught but out of bounds. It was a it was a good thing. You follow. Nick Floyd went for the interception. Ball got over his head, and it was caught by number two, uh, Tyrell Dotson of um, Faith, but he caught it over on the uh, yeah, well, sideline. Well, a lot of bounds. Uh, the sideline plastic, I guess, whatever that material is tarp. that the players, the tarp, I guess, yeah, the tarp. So it'll be fourth and five punting situation now for Faith. That was a good, after four quick runs from their goal line, uh, Tiger defense stiffened. And um, they're, they're punting, and we only have somebody back 15 yards. I know he's I had we, I think this is punt safe. They're, they're not thinking he's going to. We got a guy that needs to get his head up. Whoo, scare me. They took a good roll. Well, this is going to be a very effective kick. It's going to roll dead just inside the four, just inside the five-yard line of your follow. That's going to be a 42-yard punt. I'm going to tell you what. The Tigers need to note what happened right there, Keith. They all ran down there, and they when the ball stopped, nobody downed that ball. Uh, they turned and walked off, and as they turned and walked off, the official went ahead and blew it dead. You might want to have somebody kind of tail that next time. If you do that again, pick it up and take off with it. But uh, – Tigers are backed up to their four-yard line. So Faith was successful coming off their goal line from the seven on the last possession. You follow, lined up for a field goal last time they had it after a nice drive. We're still tied at, half, at 15 like we were at halftime through five and a half minutes here of the third quarter. Cotton in shotgun formation in his end zone. He'll hand it to Harris. Harris breaks the line of scrimmage. It's the second level. He'll have a first down and more. He's going to cross the 20-yard line. He'll go up around the 20. Three, maybe the 24-yard line. They said the 23, so give him a quick gain of 19 yards on first down, and the Tigers uh, pick up a big first down coming off the goal line. I'd give it to Harris for a while. As, as soon as I say that, Harris checks out of the game. Looks like Chubb is back into the game. Yes, it is him. I see that big left hand wrapped up with a cast on it. So the senior running back for you follow. 
Chubb Nelson in at the in at tailback. He's in a pistol formation behind Cotton. A delayed count from Cotton. He'll have a receiver split wide to the left. Anderson, he'll have a slot to the near side. Mitchell, 10 and seconds Q. on the play clock. The official raised your hand back here. They'll take it. They'll hand it off to Nelson. Nelson is going to be tackled right there at the line of scrimmage for no gain. I will say this, uh, Doug. One reason that Harris seems to be effective is he keeps his eyes up and picks his hole. It seems like Nelson runs extremely hard, but he he, he, he kind of runs he, he with ran, reckless. Ab- yeah, ran right into the tackle that yeah, time. Yeah, re- reckless abandon. He runs. Uh, Harris, not- Harris is standing on the sideline ready to go. I don't understand why he's not in there. He's been very effective tonight. Second and 10 from the 23-yard line. Clock running 5-10 and counting here. Tied at 15 between the Tigers and the Rams. First round playoff action. Cotton takes. He throws a fade route once again. It's Mitchell. Mitchell catches the ball. Mitchell has the ball at the 48-yard line. Number two got his hands on it, tried to make it look like he came down with it too, but uh, get out of his face. They don't get no penalties. Woo. Good thing there. It's yeah, going to be complete all the way yeah, out to the they're 40. They're trying to uh, – the, the, the defensive back, he was, a tie goes to the uh, offense always. So how many yards was that? He actually oh. came down with it when he rolled over. The defensive guy had his hands so on So it was 27 plus 2 is 29 yards. Mitchell's having a big night receiving tonight. Tigers with it first and 10 from the Faith 48-yard line. I don't know what we're doing, but we try to draw them off sides with the first clap every time. It's not worked. They go to heavy front now. Five man, two linebackers up close. It's Harris, but he is going to be tackled for a loss of a yard on the play back to the 49 yard line. I'm surprised we tried to run against that heavy front. Uh, Doug, they really uh, outnumbered us in the box that time, and they're yeah, going to they give did. us a, a gracious spot. They're going to mark that for no gain on that play. A little like the line judge ran in about the 49, but they mark him forward, nosing the ball right at the 48. So second and 10 from the 48-yard line of Faith. Five-man front for Faith now as uh, Cotton looks to throw. He's going to throw it. Mitchell's there. Pass is a little high, and and, uh, Mitchell's calling for a hold as he says the defensive back was holding his jersey. And I hear hear somebody from you follow yelling that he got healed. That sounds like the PA guy down there. We never hear nothing out of Butler, but – uh, I didn't get to see it, but uh, not only him, but some of the fans out there. Uh, there must have been some holding going on of some kind. 3.57 to go in the third quarter play, still tied at 15. You follow with a third and 10 now from the Faith Academy 48-yard line. Three receivers wide side left. Cotton takes, looking to throw. He's looking straight down the field. He's going to flush on the pocket now. He's going to throw it on the run, but he throws it out of bounds. Didn't give our player a chance to get it. He threw it so accurately two weeks ago at Early County, but uh, that that the, the, the passes on the move tonight have not been quite as accurate. He's shown some great passes tonight, but that one sailed out of bounds. It'll be fourth down 10, and uh, the Tigers line up to punt. Well, let's punt it away from number two who's going back. We don't want a big return, but I'm looking out there. I want to see where number seven is. He's going to line up on the left side. You follow his right side. He's been the one pressuring. He's the one that blocked the uh, field goal to see if they come after this punt or what. This seven, nice punt. It's going to hit at the – hit about the 17-yard line and time to take, took a neutral bounce. Hit. It's going to be down at the 17. I'm going to tell you what. I wonder if uh, if Browning plays golf because he would be wow. – he'd be heck with his wedges. As it seems like those punts always check up. That one looked like one that was kind of tail dragging that might roll a little bit, but uh, it uh, it came down at the 17-yard line. Just kind of sat there. But I tell you what, each team started to deepen their own territory, and each team drove it out near midfield and was able to punt the other team back deep. Well, it was one pass play. Uh, actually, only six yards. It was the run that got Faith out of the shadow of their own end zone last time. We'll see what they come out with now here from their own 17-yard line with three minutes and 39 seconds to go in the third. Shotgun formation back, flank to his left. They're going to throw the wide receiver screen. It's complete. And running back to the inside, 
Tigers do a pretty good job bringing him down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard gain on the play. We'll give him a yard. But a good swarming defense uh, by the Tigers to make the tackle. Uh, second down and nine. Keith, I was listening to a podcast or show from out of Mobile earlier today, and it talked about some of the schools around Mobile and how deep they go into the playoffs every year, third, fourth round, and they expect to win. And he, he said that's really an advantage to them if it's a close game late. We'll see. It's a hungry Tigers team against an experienced fate team. Who wants it the most here in late in the third? So Faith takes it, looking to throw this time. Going to throw it out there. There's a man there. It's going to be tipped and incomplete. Number 23 for Ufala, uh providing the defense. It's going to be Caleb Moore. He is a sophomore out there at corner. Uh, he is in for Tony Coleman. He gives up quite a bit of height to Coleman. Moore listed at 5'8", Coleman at six foot two. Third and nine after the incomplete pass. Interesting, Doug, that they went after the sophomore that uh, typically not out there for the Tigers. They went right to that matchup. Sack receivers to the wide side right. Quarterback Daltrey looks to throw a screen. They score it complete. Boom. And there the Tigers are to bring him down. Good defensive play that time by number 48 of Ufala. That was Shamarion Smith. And uh, the sophomore came in and made, laid a big hit on the uh, running back number five. That play lost three yards, and uh, it's a punting situation for for Faith. I saw a lot of the Faith fans that didn't like the – it was a good defensive play on the far side. They were up on the rail over there arguing. Nothing they could argue there as uh, Faith backed up deep fourth and 13. Browning Anderson back for Ufala. There's the punt. Anderson's just going to let it hit. And it takes a big faith roll, 10, now Man. 15 yards. It's going to roll inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. We asked we asked Coach Jernigan last night on the coaches show, and, and, and the, the return men have the green light to catch the ball, apparently. But uh, that time the ball hit uh, on the face side of midfield and rolled down to the 38-yard line of Ufala, but at least Ufala has the ball. Well, 12 yards on that one, and – probably 15 yards at least on the last roll before that. Uh, that's uh, two and a half first downs you got to make up there just on the roll of the punt by not fielding it. 156 to go in the third quarter. First and 10, you follow from the 38-yard line. Three receivers to the wide side right. Takes a snap, hands it to Harris. Harris is going to be uh, caught from the backside pursuit. Hill to a two-yard gain on that play. At least second down and eight. Turned into a, the whole game has really turned into a defensive struggle, Doug. Uh, interception return for touchdown by Faith halfway through the first quarter. They got the two point conversion. They led eight to nothing. Ufala came back, tied it at eight, took a fifteen to eight lead until a late interception by Ufala gave Faith good field position. They mm. tied it at halftime, fifteen apiece, and that's where we stand. That that running play loses two yards. It'll bring up actually loses a yard, one yard loss. It'll be third down and nine. Third we and pulled, nine. We pulled our center to try to block the blitzing in that time, and he couldn't get there fast enough as the end closed down super hard and was able to make the tackle in the backfield for a yard so loss. So what do you do to take advantage of that, the end well, crashing you, that fast? You toss it to the outside or you, uh, you throw a little pop pass to the outside or something. He's going to crash that hard. Uh, let the guy on the, line up a tight end or a slot and let him come in and just drop it to the slot receiver. Third and nine from the 39-yard line of Ufala. And I believe out. the Tigers are going to call a timeout. We do. With that timeout, we'll step aside be back after this commercial break. Proudly serving the Ufala area for over 30 years, Wartz Consulting is here to help you with all of your IT needs. Call Chris Wirtz at 334-695-2820. Has a lack of depth. I wonder how Gulf... Benny Whitehead Incorporated has called you home since 1965. Today, the family-owned business owns and operates 119 tractors and trailers and employs over 150 people. Benny Whitehead is nationally known as a leader in safety and keeping the air clean and fuel consumption low. 
Benny Whitehead Incorporated loves you, Paula, and would like to wish Lakeside and you, Paula, a safe and successful season. Bye. Back at Tiger Stadium, third and nine, following the Ufala Tiger for timeout. Their first here in the second half, 39 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Second, third down nine from the 39 of Ufala. Cotton calls for the shotgun snap. They're going to now look to the sidelines and change the play. Two receivers to the short side left, two to the wide side right. One back, Harris flanks Cotton to his, to his right. There's a snap. They fake it to Harris. Going to roll the run the court, wide receiver screen to Mitchell. Mitchell making players miss. He cuts back to the outside. He picks up a block. He'll have a first down. They throw a flag behind the play. Mitchell went out of bounds inside the 40-yard line of, of Faith, but they threw a flag behind the play. It all looked like legal blocks from here. It happened right here in front of us, folks, and it's going to be a hold more than likely as they, they actually marked Mitchell at the 41-yard line of Faith. Faith down there dancing. They called a crackback. They called a crackback block, and that's possible. But because Mitchell reversed his field like that, that's a that's a huge penalty. Going to take it back to the thirty-six yard line. Mm. It erases a very good play call after the timeout. Fifteen yard penalty on that play. Only 11 seconds off the clock on that play. It's still 29.6 seconds to go in the third quarter now. Third and 13 instead of third and nine after that. We may just uh, hang that ball down the sideline, Doug, except for they have a safety over the top now unless we take him. Time for Anderson to come back. Yeah, Anderson hasn't been targeted in quite some time. They're going to throw it this time, though. It's intended for Pew, and it's broken up. It's incomplete. Good play by the defense about that time. It'll be fourth down in a punting situation for Ufala. That's the first three and out for Ufala. To, other than the three passes at the end of the first half, uh, that's the first three and out. This has really settled down into a defensive struggle here as it was a three and out for, for Faith on their last possession. 24 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter, tied at 15, a scoreless third quarter so far. Browning Anderson, the junior wide receiver and punter, stands back at his 21-yard line to receive this snap. What? Wow. There's a nice punt. It's going to spiral that will turn over. It's going to drive him back to the 20-yard line on a fair catch. They'll give it to him at the 23-yard line. He was still – oh, Lord of mercy. He was still backtracking at the 23-yard line. The ball hadn't even come down yet. I don't think she got that mark right, but nevertheless, that's where it'll be. 17 seconds left to go in the third quarter play. Still tied at 15. The Rams have come out the ball right dead in the center of the field. And the first matchup between the Tigers and the Rams is, looks like it's going to go down to the fourth quarter to see who comes out on top here tonight in the first round of the playoffs, Keith. It's been a very, very evenly matched game tonight. As we said, you fall ahead had uh, 28 more yards of offense than the Rams at halftime. I'd say it's still tracking around right around that, about about even on yardage here in the third quarter so far. And I'll hand it off to Burnett. Burnett runs over a Tiger about the 25-yard line. He carries tacklers up to the 30. That's a very impressive seven-yard run that time for Christian Burnett. On the final play of the third quarter, that'll bring the third quarter to an end. Scoreless third quarter. We're tied at 15. We've got 12 minutes of action left here from Tiger Stadium in Eufaula between the Rams and the Tigers. We'll be back after this commercial break. Hey, Tiger fans. Daniel Pulley here, your local Chick-fil-A Eufaula owner-operator. We are so excited to be the official sponsor of the weekly Eufaula Tiger Coaches Show for the 2022 football season. Join us for the live show at Chick-fil-A Eufaula every Thursday starting at 6 p.m., Our incredible team is ready to serve you. And don't forget, eat more chicken. Hey, Tiger fans. This is Lauren Streeter with Wiregrass Realty, and I'm here to tackle all your real estate needs. Let's team up and make a touchdown on your new home. Give me a call today, 334-614-7409. Go Tigers! Well, we won won a close game last two weeks ago. 12 minutes to go from Tiger Stadium. 15 apiece between the Tigers and the Rams. The Rams have the ball second down three from their 30-yard line. 
as we get started here for the final 12. First round playoff action here from Tiger Stadium. The winner of this game will take on the Demopolis Ilmore County winner. So second down from the 30-yard line, you follow with a three-man front. One receipt, one running back. They're going to run the uh, wide receiver screen. Tigers are there, and they finally drag him out of bounds. They finally drag him out of bounds. Faith is calling for a flag, but uh, that receiver was fighting hard over there. He was. They, they did throw a flag. They threw you're one. Kidding. They threw one. That's the beggingest bunch I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they did. They did not throw him to the ground. So that's another 15-yard penalty potentially against you. Follow that would be. All right. If our crowd was into it, they'd be standing up booing right here. But I don't know. They're dead asleep. That's a terrible call. The head official still over, or actually wasn't the head official. Another official was over there talking to the coach, and now he's relaying a. a whatever the coach said to the head official. I'm just going to tell you, Doug. I mean, you know, I was just looking out the window. I mean, everybody's I can't sitting, on believe, sitting on their hands. I can't believe they're not even getting a sideline warning. The the chain gang had to come way out on the field. The head official's taking a timeout, and the chains are wrapped up uh, over there, and they got a problem with it. it but uh, they were I mean, all out on the field. We, we did a good job field. playing that receiver that time. He broke a tackle, was trying to get up the sidelines, and we – we, we kind of wrestled him out of bounds. We were, had contact with him and kind of slung him on out of bounds to make sure he didn't get away because he had already gotten away behind the line of scrimmage. But it looked like he let him go at, yeah. at least at the at the sideline. Did not did not take him to the ground at all. That was a pretty weak fifteen yard penalty that time. And but like you said, I mean, no protest whatsoever uh, from our fans or our coaches, right? Well, five seconds into the fourth quarter, and they get a big 15-yard penalty and uh, a, on what was a, actually a two-yard loss on the pass play uh, I marked off. Uh, it should have been about five, but he kept fighting forward. I think Coach Jernigan was wanting to talk to the head official, but he does not want to come over here as I see Coach Jernigan turn around and come back now. I'm not sure what the delay. The chains have been stretched back out and are good to go, but uh, – they show two timeouts for Ufala and one timeout for Faith. And how do, that can't be right, even if they took a timeout there, can it? Yeah, I don't know. That was a that was a two yard loss on that pass play. Yeah. And then fifteen yards on the penalty. Uh, it, this is uh, folks, we didn't take a commercial timeout. They didn't signal timeout. The change were kind of wrapped up over there. They immediately straightened them out. But since then, it has been a, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven man, one lady discussion about something out there in two different packs. I have no idea what this is all about. You know, and, and, I, and we actually bragged on the officiating maybe too soon uh, as we, we talked about it being a pretty pretty evenly called game. Wait a minute, uh, wait, a minute, wait, a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. I said it was adequate. I don't think you've ever heard me brag on a fish. <laughs> well, we were we were somewhat complimentary, there I guess. You, it's, it, it, you know, it was it's never what you want on either side, but it wasn't oh Lord, it wasn't like our last game. We'll just put it that way. I guess I guess it's all relative, comparatively speaking. For those of you who've forgotten, we went across the the Chattahoochee into Georgia. Um, two weeks ago. Keith, and, what, uh, is there somebody hurt somewhere on the side? I don't see anybody down on the sideline on the far side. That, that se would seem like what it is, though. And there, the officials are... I don't know. They're actually trying a new center snapping the ball now, number 50 snapping it. But we haven't seen anybody. There's nobody on their sideline hurt. Nobody down anywhere. Faith is coming back out now. You follow us coming back out. That was a lot like a super long timeout, but we didn't see them signal either side of timeout there. Yeah. I was trying to add up these penalties. Uh, they are 
considerably in favor of faith at this point. All right, we got single. The tackle doesn't have tight end. He does have a back to his side. Let's see if Yonze can put some pressure on the quarterback. They're going to hand it off to Burnett, and the Tiger defense is there to bring him down for a loss. And yeah, Of course, he, they, dry, they drag him back. They said the ball came out late, but uh, – they're gonna get. They're gonna spot the ball way back up the field. They only gave. That was only a one yard loss. They drove him back to the thirty eight yard line and they hit him in the backfield behind the line of scrimmage about the forty. They gave him forward progress to the forty two. A very, very, very favorable spot. Yonze was in the backfield. He stepped up to try to avoid him, but the rest of the Tigers was there quickly. There's a so quick one snap. yard loss. Quarterback's gonna throw it. He's there. Coleman's there. And uh, incomplete pass is a uh, good strutting stride for tr stride was the taller Tony Coleman. They'll bring up third and 11 from the 42 yard line of faith. 11 15 to go here, still tied at 15 between the Tigers and the Rams. The Rams, you got to remember, folks, too, they led the number one team in the state most of the game, lost by one point. Was it last week or the week before the it last was, region It was two game? weeks ago when we were in uh, early in, in Blakely, Georgia. Um, as a matter of fact, they, they led the majority of the game. As Doug said, we thought that Faith was going to upset UMS. That was at UMS. There's a snap. Looking to throw. He throws it over the middle. Good, Good play. play. Nick Floyd Good play. tipped it away. He got there right as the ball did. Got his hand, reached, reached through, and tipped the ball out of the intended receiver. Goodwill's hands. It'll be 4th and 11 in a punting situation here for, for Faith Academy. Well, if you're going to – if you're Faith, I don't know if you uh, try it here, but at some point somebody's going to have to try to pull a rabbit out of their hat and do something tricky. It may be a fake or something here. You fall in needs to be aware. They're going to leave this, the regular defense in there, and uh, Floyd's going to step back. This time he's going to just let it hit. And once again, it takes a huge bounce. 15 yards, 16, 17 yards inside the 20 to the 17-yard line. Doug, I cannot stand that, and I've talked about it all year long. Well, that's been – I mean, it could have been a big difference in this game. We could have been playing I mean, there. I mean, we're, talking, the we're talking at this point probably 50 yards worth of roll on punts in three punts, the last that's three the punts. last three, yeah, pretty close. Tigers come out. They're going to have to start at their own 17-yard line. I think that's where Fates uh, – uh, drive started the last time they picked up a first down and they got an unsports or not unsports they got a 15 yard penalty to boot tiger starts same place let's see what they can do gonna hand it off to harris who picks his way through the line he's gonna cross the 20 to about the 22 23 yard and 23 yard line nice gain six yards on the play the tiger defense offensive line must have opened up a pretty good push that time because it did not look like a six-yard run to me, but it's a six-yard gain. This will be second and four from the 23-yard line. Good good gain on first down for you, Fala. 10-33, the clock moving here in the fourth quarter. Tied at 15 between the Rams and the Tigers. They're blitzing. They're coming in for a blitz. Tigers going to hand right it off, and it. they run right into it for a three-yard loss to the 20. I don't know if we have the ability to check out of that or not, Doug, but they, they walked up to the line of scrimmage with a run blitz. And we ran straight into it for a three-yard loss, bringing up a third down and seven. I see us going delayed counts from time to time and uh, change the play. That would have been a great situation right there to change the play. Third down seven from the 20 with 9.57, the clock running here in the fourth quarter. Been tied at 15 for a long time now. Cotton's going to throw it. Has a man there. It's going to be Anderson who cannot catch up to the ball at the 45-yard line of Faith. It was sailing wide. If he had let him up the field, he had a chance, but it was kind of sailing towards the sidelines. Anderson could not get the ball, and it's going to be a three and out. And that's, this is, this is the big. second they, in a row for Yafala. Swapping field position here, too. They're going to come away with great field position after this punt. I'm telling you, the hidden yardage, Doug, as you well know, uh, can make a huge difference in a close defensive struggle like this. And Tigers have lost yardage on these punt exchanges just simply because of not catching the ball. Anderson's done a good job kicking the ball tonight. The last punt was uh, was outstanding. Well, even if they don't get a return here, they're going to come away with the ball close to midfield, 40, 50-yard line, somewhere in that range. Anderson gets it away. This time it's going to hit. 
and then this time it'll take a Ufala bounce, but not much of one. One, and then and then backs up back. back across the fifty. That was a six-yard backup. I don't understand it. I mean, it's great if you're kicking, trying to cough and corner kick, but for some reason, the way that Browning hits the ball when he punts, it just does not impart any overspin to the ball. It, it always backs up. Well, if you're one of these colleges that uh, needs you, you got an extra scholarship laying around, you want somebody to be able to poke it inside the 10 every time, he'll hit it down to the one, and it'll back up to the five every time. So, so first and 10 in you follow territory now at the 49-yard line, Faith with the golden opportunity here. 9.32 to go here in the fourth quarter play. I hear one fan rooting for our defense. I think we need to wake up over here. Going to run a screen pass. They completed uh, the Burnett. And uh, good job on the tackle that time. I believe it was Nick. No, it was Moss, Jay Moss, bringing that uh, running back Burnett down for a short game, maybe a yard on that play. And we have a – they is, have a player slow. It's Burnett the slow to get up. He's, gonna, right. he's, he's going gonna, back in the game. He can't do that. He's going to the sideline. He's just a look, maybe a little cramp or something there. He shook it off immediately, whatever it was, and he's uh, on the sideline. So they're ready to go. That would be a huge loss for them if he, if he. The way he walked off, I expect we'll see him right back. I don't know though. If you look over there, he's uh, on the bench now, being attended to. So we'll keep an eye on that. He has been an outstanding player for them all game, but he's headed back toward the field now. He'll be back in. He probably missed one play. Quarterback going to throw a quick mm. wide receiver screen. Tigers are there. They're finally going to bring him out of bounds as Nick Floyd. They drive, uh, and that's going to lose a yard back to the 50. It'll be third and 11. Actually, two yards is it was a uh, second right. nine. Two, two yard loss. Good drive back there. So, clock has stopped. 8.53 to go in the fourth quarter, tied at 15. Faith scored a touchdown to tie this game with 110 to go with the second quarter of play right before halftime. That's where we still stand, tied at 15. Barnett's back into the game. Long time here. Is, uh, keep looking for the official to raise her hand back here, saying there's 10 seconds left. There goes there the goes. hand. They get it off. Daltrey looking to throw. He's going to throw it down the field. Has a man there. He's got mm. it. He dropped Missed it. it. He dropped it <laughs> the 10-yard line, thankfully. Goodwill has made some big catches tonight, but that time it looked like it kind of kind of trampolined off his hands. He yeah. was falling, and he, just the recoil, he was able to bring it in at the 10-yard line. That brings up a fourth down 11. And, uh, Doug, do we, now we're going to put Anderson back this time. Uh, he's going to shank it this time right over into our bench, and we're going to get it about the 40-yard line. So that's another three and out for Faith after having good field position at the 49-yard line. This ball is a pretty good kick. Either. It's going to hit yeah. at the 16-yard line. It's going to roll dead at the 13-yard line. So that time the Tigers only lose three on the uh, on the roll, and it'll be you fall a ball, first and 10 from the 13. 8.33 to go in the, in the fourth quarter play. That time, their, their punter that's got a good roll every time is had a little back up to it. So, uh, Tigers get a break there. Good long drive here. We need to see some good passes. A lot of dose of Harris may be on this drive. Tigers in the G-line set. We saw some success from this earlier in the game. Going to hand it to Harris, who picks his way through the middle of the line, crosses ah. the 20 to the 22-yard line. So, it's nine quick yards. I tell you what, Doug. The Tigers have, have, I won't say a size advantage, but it's, a, it's, it's at least even on the front. Tigers have done this against bigger teams this year. Why not stay in this set and see if they can power the ball down the field? We're doing it. Second down and one. And they hand it off to Harris again. He's going to pick his way through, but he's going to be stopped at yeah. the line of scrimmage for no gain. They had some penetration that time. You know, we have a couple of different sets, misdirections and things off of this. See what the Tigers decide to do here. You know, we're going under center. You can even run a quarterback I sneak. I was going to say quarterback sneak, or if Cotton was to fake it and, and roll around the end, that time it was wide open. Who knows? 
the next time, but that time it was wide open. I mean, a quarterback sneak here with uh, Harris pushing. Going to hand it off inside. This is the two-point conversion play to Jaquavius Moss. He gets his first down. He needed, he needed a yard and a half. He got about two and a half yards, basically about three yards actually on that play. Tigers move the chains. So, 726. Faith has a, uh, it looks like Barnett down with cramps out there. And I think that's probably what happened to him on the sideline over there. That could be big with 726 still to go in this game. You're talking about wearing somebody down. It's been a hard-fought game. That's their bread and butter on offense, and he's done a great job on defense. And if he's having trouble with cramps, I'm not going to cry no tears over that situation here tonight. Well, you know, we talked to talked to Coach Jernigan last night, and, um, you know, that was really the Tigers' hope. Now, you know, in the 11th game of the year, um, you know, this, this faith team has played with these uh, same players all year long. And uh, it's not a hot night tonight. It's a pr- fairly cool night in the 60s. But uh, Barnett's up on his feet, and he's going to make his way off the field. He'll have to stay out for at least one play. But he's now missed uh, – about uh, two out of the last six plays in this football game uh, with cramps. So a little bit of breathing room, but still deep in their own territory. Tigers out to the 24-yard line, 7.26 to go. Still tied at 15 in this game. All 15 points, a uh, result of a pick six and then an interception the Tigers threw earlier for fate. Nick Floyd in the backfield now. They're going to toss it to Floyd, who has penetration. He makes a couple of people miss, but he's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. So it's going to be second down and 10, and no flag against them. They drive Floyd all the way back to the 16-yard line. Okay. Well, obviously they've made an adjustment to it now. We need to go back to something, give it to Harris, uh, do something. Uh, Yonze Pierre is in the game uh, as well. So Yon- it's second down and 10 from, just from inside the 25-yard line. Clock is moving, 645 and counting here. In the fourth quarter, a game tied at 15. Tigers staying in the tight, what we call the G-line set. Now we're going to shift shift around this time. And uh, formation I haven't seen out of the Tigers this year. we got numbers to the left. Under center goes Copeland Cotton. He'll take it. He's going to look to throw. Uh, what's the whistle? And I don't know what the – they're going to say a legal procedure on you fall. I'm not sure. Apparently someone moved. I don't know, but – I'm just we telling can't you. Get out of our own huh? Way. We can't seem to get out of our own way sometimes. So back to the 19 yard line, 624 left in the fourth quarter, Doug. Tigers, like I said, like Doug said, all 15 faith points came off of Ufala turnovers. An interception return for touchdown. An interception of the Tiger 32-yard line led to a short field and a faith touchdown. On third, on second down, they throw oh it. Oh, my goodness. Um, it was a little early there. It no was call. intended for Antron Mitchell on the far sideline. He does plead this case to the official that threw the uh, procedure penalty against you follow on the previous play and uh, to no avail. It'll be third and 15. That's out the clock with 6.03 to go here in the fourth quarter play. Big play for you follow. Third and 15 from the 19-yard line. If you fall, I can't move it at all. Faith looks to get good field position once again. And I believe we're going to use a timeout. I say we're taking a long time there. On third and 15, we burn our second timeout here of the second half. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. Easy Metal Building Kits, Pole Barns, and Metal Roofing Supplies. Apex Metal Express carries multiple kit sizes and colors with at-home DIY instruction. Apex Metal Express, fast delivery, superior quality, excellent customer service. Oh. Back. And we're back at Tiger Stadium. Third down, 15 yards to go from the 19-yard line of Eufaula, 603. 
to go here in the fourth quarter play a tie game, 15 apiece, between the Faith Rams of Mobile and the Eufaula High School Tigers. Harris will be in the backfield behind the quarterback, Copeland Cotton. He has two receivers to the wide side, field left, one to the right. He'll take the snap, looking to throw. He's going to pump fake. He's going to roll out now to his right. He's still up. He's going to run the ball this time. He's breaking down, but he's not going to. He's come up well short, well short of his first down. He had two men down the field. If he could have seen them, Doug, it could have been a big play. Mitchell and Coleman were both behind the defense. He couldn't have gotten it to Coleman. Coleman's on the near side, but Mitchell was open on the same side of the field as Cotton, but Cotton uh, pulled it down. He did pick up seven yards to the 21-yard line, but it's a punting situation. And here it is. They're going to look to get good field position again with the clock rolling. Five and a half minutes left to go in this game. You kind of wanted to move it out, get some field position or something there because Fate's not going to make a, time, uh, a mistake to hurt their self. Go ahead and punt it. We may need that time later now. 5.08 when they snap the ball. A lot of pressure from Faith. A uh, tail dragon spiral that we hit and bounces backwards. Sheesh. It hit at the 46-yard line of Faith. It bounces back to the 49-yard line of Eufaula. Five yards backwards on the bounce. It's just uncanny, Doug. I mean, the odds are if you drop if you drop a football the way it's shaped, it's going to have to bounce. You would think 50% of the time it's just like flipping a coin. Odds say 50% of the time it's going to land on heads and 50% of the time it's going to land on tails. But it seems like 90% of the time those punts always back up. Yeah, it's a, it's, you would think it's a 50-50 thing. Now, if you kick a spiral, you expect it to roll forward. But I don't know how we consistently go backwards with those. But great field position again for Faith. Only 49 yards, probably only 25 or so from field goal range. And Barnett back in the game. They hand it off to him up the middle, and he is going to take it ahead for five yards. They're, well, they're allowing him, a long they're, time. They're, yeah, they're, they're giving forward, and push. forward progress. They give him five yards on that gain, and he was stopped after about a three-yard gain, but they just let it go. Earlier, Eufaula came up with a, with a fumble on a delayed thing, and they gave the ball back to Faith. That time, they let it keep going, and they gave him an extra three yards. Actually, it's, it's six down to the 43-yard line. He gets up uh, stretching. You can tell he's right on the verge of cramps again. But at that time, even the quarterback stood back there a while and then ran up there and started pushing the pile. Uh, as uh, It was a stalemate for a long time and then just kind of worked forward for a couple of yards. Second and four from the 43-yard line. You follow. Oh, they bring on, motion. Two, two men in motion. It looked like two men in motion. They're going to hand it to Barnett. Oh. He, broke, he broke free. He's looking to turn the corner. He's going to have a first down. He will be tackled at the 35-yard line. You follow. But that's an eight-yard gain. We had him stacked up, and he uh, broke free uh, for and broke to the outside. Oh, picked up some open field and picked up an eight-yard gain to the 35-yard line. That will be a faith first down. That's the first first down for faith in a while. They had had a couple of three and outs. Now, uh, with 349 and counting, it's Faith Ball at the 35 yard line, and you follow in a score in a uh, tie game at 15. You follow live this game 15, live this game 15 to, to eight late in the first half. The Tigers put it in the air, Faith intercepted. There's a handoff to Barnett once again. Burnett, I'm sorry, Burnett, he takes it forward to the 32 yard line, gain of three on that play, but uh. Interception with under two minutes to go in the first half by Faith. It took them 48 seconds to put it in the end zone and tie the football game at 15, and that's where we still stand. There's an injured there's an injured Faith, Faith Academy Graham on the field. I thought it might have been Burnett again. Murdett was down kind of on a knee, but that's not him. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be back after this and from the Brown Heating and Air broadcast booth. Carrier asks, what does comfort mean to you? Is it a cool lake breeze on a hot summer day or by a warm fire on a cold night? Make every room in the house as inviting as the next. Also, make the air fresh and clean for everyone and keep humidity where it belongs. At Carrier, comfort means more than just the temperature. Contact Brown Heating and Air Condition, 714 South Eufaula Avenue, 334-687-5244. They had a 20 to nothing lead. 
Back in you fall, it's 20 to 16. Uh, Charles Henderson clinging to a four point lead over Williamson here. It's a tie game, 15 apiece. Shotgun snap on second down and seven. Quarterback is flushing. He's rolling out. He does not run the ball. He's calling for, uh, he's going to run out of bounds. He kind of looked awkwardly doing that. He ran out of bounds. He did pick up about three yards down to the 29 yard line. The first down would come at the 25 yard line. So it's third down and four. From the 29-yard line, probably four down territory with 2.51 to go in the game. Look for Barnett here. So Daughtry picks up three yards on the scramble. He really did not want to run that ball. He was pointing down the field, but there was just nobody open. Ball from the right hash mark. All right, Yonze, come on. There's a snap. Quarterback Daughtry dropping back. He's looking. He's got plenty of time. Plenty of time. He's going to throw it finally late. In the end zone, there's a man there. He catches it. Touchdown. Dante never rushed. Good goodness. On third down and four, they threw it over. They had a bit. They had a. They had a uh, mismatch that time, and uh, they threw it up. And uh, their tall receiver, Goodwill, able to go up over uh, our defensive back. He had a uh, about a four inch. Four to five inch height advantage, and uh, he just went up and high pointed the ball and uh, made the touchdown. That's Doug. That's actually where you really might want to interfere with him there. Yeah, Grab him first, and pull him down. First, first points. Their offense has really put well. They did throw after the interception. They were able to throw it in the end zone and score. But uh, I'm telling you, I'm not real impressed with Region One after what we've heard all year long. I don't think we're looking at eventual state champions either way. The extra points are actually blocked. And well, uh, we had a lot of pressure right up through the middle. I think that might have been Yonsei that on the block with 241. What else is new? Tigers going to get the ball and, and have a last chance to, to go at it here. But uh, they haven't been able to move the ball in the second half. They're going to have to find something that will work here with 241 left to go. That was a five-play, 49-yard drive that took two minutes and 24 seconds off the clock. It was a 29-yard touchdown pass. He had literally all day did uh, Jarrett Daltrey. He stood back there for a long, long time, never had any pressure. He finally threw it up, gave his uh, tall receiver, Goodwill, a chance to uh, make a play on the ball, which he did. And um, Tigers trail again. They trailed 8 to nothing early in the game. Then they came back to take a 15-8 to lead. Through an interception late in the first half, Faith capitalized with a touchdown with 110 to go, and now Faith has scored with 241. And, uh, Doug, we talked about the 50 yards or so the Tigers lost on let the, 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 the punch roll. Faith got the ball at the 49-yard line there. They just kept getting the ball in good field position, and they finally made the Tigers pay. 21-15. to Going to come down to Harris. He drops it at the 16-yard line. He picks it up, trying to bring it around the near sideline. He takes it across the 30. He'll go out of bounds at the 34-yard line. That's where the Tigers have it with 234 to go in the game. They have one timeout left. They are 66 yards away. The Tigers must score a touchdown as they trail by six. Two thirty-four to go. Doug, I mean, the way the Tigers throw the ball, the Tigers have time. Now, Faith has only given up 68 points on defense all year long. The Tigers have scored 15 tonight. They're going to take 22 to win this game. Rolling to his right. He throws it. It's going to be caught. Nice play over there on the far sidelines as uh, Tron Mitchell came down for a seven-yard gain to the 41-yard line. I didn't think we had anything working there, Doug, as we rolled right into the pressure, Barnett right into through, Christian Bar- Burnett. He, he went through two blocks. I mean, he just still cramps and everything. And he's Like you said, he's tough as a woodpecker's beak. He's a good ball player for them. Second and – Three or four now. Three for the Tigers. 2.26 to go. That play took eight seconds off the clock. Second and three. 2.26. Straight drop back for Cotton. He throws a pass. Has Mitchell there. And uh, he was being pushed all down the sidelines. Mm-hmm. And there's no flag. There's a injured faith player on the on the field, though, is on the incomplete pass. I'm going to tell you, just a lot of hand fighting over there against Tron Mitchell. And They've been putting hands on him all night. Yeah, they're letting them. 
I tell you what, if, if we were down there playing a Ripview Stadium, I don't think these wiregrass officials will be letting that much hand checking going on. And that'll be third and a three, three and a half now for the Tigers as uh, that kind of gives them time to regroup there a little bit and decide what they want to do here. Uh, I, that was a little scary, Keith, when, when Cotton floats the ball. That little uh, number, I think it's number eight. eight. That's, who's, that, that's who's hurt. Oh, well, he is very quick to that ball. He's already got one interception tonight and uh, almost came up with that one. I tell you what, Doug, this might be a good place for a quarterback draw. We haven't run that type of play, but uh, it's third down three. We've got to pick up the first down to keep this going. 219 to go. Tigers trailing. They're going to hand it off to Harris. Harris picks it up. He, he picks up his first down out to the 48-yard line. They, they say, say roll the clock is the first down. Yeah, they stopped it because he they stopped the clock for the first down, but they'll start it back. So that was a uh, that was a gain of six yards on that uh, third down play. Clock back moving, 2-11 and counting. Tigers have to go quick. They take the snap. Cotton looking to throw. He's going to throw it. It's going to be caught. No, Anderson had it in his hands at the 41-yard line of uh, Faith. Just unable to bring it in, the sure-handed Anderson. That would have been a first down with stop the clock. As it is, it stops it with exactly two minutes to go in the game. Two minutes left here. Tigers trail by, by six, but they have it 52 yards away. Tigers drove. The Tigers drove with a minute 24 left two weeks ago from the 49-yard line. Very similar situation here. Yeah. Different opponent. Second and 10 from the 48-yard line of Eufaula. Harris is the back behind Cotton, the quarterback. He'll take the snap. He's going to look to throw. He's going to throw it. It's going to be caught. Mitchell on the far sidelines. They're going to – he's going to finally go out of bounds. He needed to get out of bounds and they conserve were, time. They were trying to hold him in bounds, and finally one of their defenders came and knocked him out of bounds. But it was a great move. He caught it just above the sticks for the first down. 12-yard gain. And uh, he he saw that and immediately just leaned back into the to the defender so he didn't lose the first down. Right. So, one four. they started the clock back. Oh, oh my he was goodness. way out of bounds. Come on, folks. Hurry up. My goodness. Folks, we have not gotten the, 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 the correct use of the clock here the last two games. Cotton pulls it. He's going to throw a pass down the field. They're and holding they're Anderson. And Anderson Anderson just punched him in the face, and a flag comes from 30 yards back up the field. I don't blame Anderson. That was actually two flags. You watch. One of them's going to be interference, and one of them's going to be where Anderson just punched him in the face. Anderson was tired of being held. And uh, the official way back up here at the 45-yard line, line of scrimmage. Holding. That's all they're going to call, holding against okay, them. Okay, well, maybe he wasn't looking, but Anderson <laughs> got away with one there. They were holding him bad, and I can understand the frustration. Now they're flipping the flag back. It doesn't matter. That was actually a good play by the defender by not letting him get behind him because in high school football, it's a 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, and it saved a touchdown. Well, it's 124. Ironically, this is what was on the clock last week when Eufaula, uh started their final drive. They were at the 49-yard line of Early County. They're at the 30-yard line out of Faith. They trail by six. And the, the official that, that's right in front of the Faith sideline has come out, talked to the head official. Now they came over and talked to the official that I thought threw the flag, the other flag. Uh, I guess they saw the same thing I saw, but he's sitting there describing it. He's saying holding against faith and they have the ball marked ready to go clock shouldn't start here on after that penalty i don't think it faith lost not. two weeks ago to ums 21 to 20 tigers trying to pull out a one point victory here as they trail by six cotton throws a pass it's going to be incomplete they'll stop the clock with 116 as he rolled all the way to the near sidelines players down again that's going to be burnett he was chasing him all around he actually chased uh Cotton way out. Uh, Barnett's up, gesturing and talking to our sidelines now. Um, that's a tough throw for him, especially when he's running for his life uh, away from his throwing arm. Tigers 30 yards away from tying this game. They trail 21 to 15, 116 to go 
here in the fourth quarter play, this first round playoff game between the Tigers and the Rams. Oh, high snap. No. Cotton runs back. He picks up the ball. He's going to throw it. He gets it away. It's going to be yeah, intercepted, yeah. though. He threw it. Worth that'll it. that'll end the game. That will end the game. Got to throw it away. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. Three turnovers. Three turnovers for you follow. Three interceptions are going to be the Tigers' undoing here. That was a high snap. Nothing, not uh, Cotton's fault at all. That time it was a There's hard a flag high snap. over here. At the yeah, they threw seven. Number but. eight waved at the Ufala bench uh, as he was going off the field. That's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct, but it will be, it'll be face ball. And you follow with only one timeout remaining. They can't stop the clock, but one time, and that'll be the game. It's one oh four left to go. Well, as we've done so many times, we. We've given away a lot of things this year, and you might have earned a little respect if his fate team goes a long way in the playoffs. But I, Keith, I, from I don't what think. I've seen from other folks, I don't see them going as far as I thought they might have went uh, before seeing them live in action. Tigers put up a, a good effort tonight, but it, it was the things we've talked about all year: the mistakes, the penalties, the interceptions killed us tonight. Three interceptions, two of them led to 15 points for uh, Faith, and. Uh, the last one's going to seal the faith of the game. But uh, to me, it was the inability this year of being able to field a punt. Well, that was that was the most, to me, the most disappointing thing because they never, never mastered that through a, through 10 games and 11 if you count the uh, the jamboree. And, but, but right there, I mean, bad snap led to, you know, one mistake led to an, a compounded mistake. And then, unfortunately, it was a mortal, mortal mistake that, it's going to end this game. Um, just trying to get rid of it. Can't blame the young man. He just could not get enough on it to get it out of bounds. The ball, he tried to throw it away. Um, Faith was able to come up and intercept the ball, diving forward. And um, unfortunately, after the penalty, it's going to go back to the 10-yard line. But uh, with a 40-second play clock, they'll have to snap the ball three times, I guess. They'll have to snap it. We'll call a timeout. They'll snap it again and then they'll snap it with about 10 seconds left on the clock. Here's the first one. They're going to, I guess, let the clock run. Well, we, we, finally, we finally used the timeout with 59 seconds to go. But, this, look, I tell you, I mean, this is one of those situations where um, kind of shoulda, woulda, coulda, unfortunately. We um, had our chances in this game. We led 15 to 8 late in the first half. And instead of being content with that seven-point lead going into halftime, we, we put the ball in the air. We were both uh, first guessing that. And uh, in the grand analysis, that's going to end up being the difference in the game. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We've got a lot of young players, though, and, and Darrell will have more than five weeks to work with them uh, this time, uh, getting ready for next year. So we'll see. we we'll have to replace quarterback and, and – uh, a lot of other places. We wish uh, Yonze and uh, Patrick Screws who are definitely going to go on and play uh, at the next level, uh, along with probably some other uh, players for the Tigers, but uh, definitely those two, and we wish them well. Look forward to seeing them on Saturdays. Faith will come out, barring some crazy snap, fumble, or something. Uh, this will be the next to the last snap of the game. They'll take a knee with 57 and a half seconds. By the time they set it, they'll have 40 seconds. So, run down the list of seniors. Nick Floyd, with a great senior year, the senior safety. He had uh, some big return. He returned to kickoff for touchdown earlier this year. Uh, Javaris Washington, we did not see him on the offense tonight, but he, he had a big game last week or two weeks ago against Early County. Kenobi Young, Yonze Pierre. Copeland Cotton, Demarcus Cobb, or Chubb Nelson. That'll be the end of the game. 21 to 15 is the final. We'll just hit Caden Ingram, Zion Williams, Josiah Warren, Kevin Moore, Willard Mitchell, Zion Heath, Patrick Screws, Marion McCray, 
Xavier Adams, Jamario Mitchell, and Drayshawn Russell. All those seniors for the Tigers who played their final game in the red and white. We wish them the best as they move forward. But to, for, for tonight, the Tigers' 2022 season comes to an end. They'll finish the season 7-3 and three as they bow out to the uh, Faith Academy Rams tonight. Um, Tigers with their chances. They, they, they led 15-8, to eight, tied at halftime. A late touchdown with 2.41 to go in the game. For Faith, a 29-yard touchdown pass. And uh, that's the difference, Doug, is the Tigers lose a tough one here. Yep, it's bad to end, especially at home, but uh, bigger and better things in the future for the Tigers. And uh, there again this year, folks, we appreciate it. It's been a, an interesting year. We brought you video there again tonight We over and over why we couldn't, but uh, brought you video and uh, hope that made it a little more enjoyable, tried to improve it a little bit every year. Keith, I, I know I've said several times uh, – <laughs> I figured this would be my last year, but it uh, seems like I said that 10 years ago, and we keep winding up getting roped into this somehow. But uh, uh, it, we enjoy doing it. Can't say what next year will bring, but I hope it will be bigger and better things for all the Tiger fans. It's, uh, I think things are trending in the right direction now. Uh, we just hope they continue to do that. Uh, a lot of success to the football field, the cheerleaders, the uh, yeah, we flag did. football, a lot of them. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned that. We did talk about it last night on the coaches' show, but the uh, the Tiger cheerleading squad uh, won the Super Regionals down in Mobile. I guess it was just yesterday, I think. It seems like it was longer, but I think it was this week yeah, anyway. Well, it, it, see, it was uh, yesterday morning because I talked to Zane about being on the uh, – chick-fil-a uh, coaches show last night and he was unable to because his daughter is one of the cheerleaders and he was actually down there with them so yes. yeah so but anyway um congratulations to coach jernigan and the rest of the tigers and of course to the tiger cheerleaders uh uh on their performance um yesterday but uh this season for 2022 will come to an end and um We'll sign off for the final time uh, from tiger stadium for doug apple and i'm keith bryan wish you a good night and a great weekend Go Tigers!